YouTube. This is an unexpected collab. I've been a fan of Ox Darva for a very long time, ever since, you know, the old Dark Souls days and now the DBD days and his various challenges throughout other roguelikes and things alike. When when he said that we should do a collab together because he was learning Slay the Spire and had a challenge in mind and needed a little bit of extra help, of course, absolutely. He's one of the kindest people that I've ever met in this industry and I couldn't be more excited to have done this collab. A couple of things. First, the challenge that he wants to complete is beating an Ascension 20 run on all four characters in a row, and he has to fight the heart at least one time. Doable. I, as, as for somebody that only has about 400 hours in the game, just got Ascension 20, had never beaten an Ascension 20 run in their life, this is doable. I think I think this is a good initial challenge, enough to challenge a new player, and also enough to show everybody that Holy crap, he's really fucking good at the game. Now, the second part, a little bit of bad news. This is going to have to be in two videos because normally when I've done like coaching things like with a Joe Cat in the past, um, they were like two to three hours of run. This was five hours. I'm still tired. I'm like four hours after the run. And I'm still exhausted. I'm going to go to bed early. This was a lot for me. This was a lot for Ots. Um, but yeah, this is going to be the first half of the, the run, and then the second half will be uploaded tomorrow. If it is uploaded, I'll try to link it in the description of this video, so you can go and click that. Um, yeah, hope you enjoy the content. Please let me know if you want me to do more collabs with Ots. Maybe try to get him to teach me how to play DVD, because um, I have like 400 hours in that game, but I haven't played it in like two years. Anyway, see you tomorrow. Mwah. Hello? Uh, hi, I'd like a large pepperoni and uh, a Diet Coke, please. I'm so sorry, this is a Wendy's. We can only get give you chicken nuggets, but they come inside of the Frosty. It's our new thing, we blend it in. Subscribing. Can I use a coupon? Let's embark then? Yeah. Do you, would you like me to, to like walk you through my thinking or are we doing step by step? Yes. yes. Tell me, tell me what you're thinking, like, right as you get into a run. Do you right. look at the map before you consider your starting options? Do you, like, what, what is your, what is your step-by-step? -step? All right, let's watch. I'm not going to lie. As I told you many times, I'm a little bit lazy, so I'll be like, mm -hmm. eh, I know I can probably put, so I'm not going to look at the map a ton. I will typically first look at my options, right? If I get a lot of gold, maybe I want to get a shop early. I also know mm -hmm. what are some of the typical you know do's and don'ts that people that play this game at a higher level than me do like. so such as they typically try to take some fights and go into a shop because they know that once they get to a shop they're gonna have at least one option that's gonna stand out that will allow them to do something right okay like for so, example oh go ahead well okay i'm gonna give you like the rundown of the start of the game do you know how basic fights work in this game uh, no, nah, I play for 400 hours and I have no clue what the numbers okay. mean still. I can explain it and that way I explain it to my audience that maybe knows the game sure. even less than I do and you correct me sure. if I had any point I'm wrong. So the oh. first three fights that you take, for example, if I go on the left, that will be the first three things. If I go on the right or the middle, it would take a little bit longer. The first three little goobers that I find are going to be taken from a pool of easy fights and they are much easier to deal with. After that, the pool will be stronger fights, and you start to get, you know, a ton more enemies and stuff. Obviously, if you go with the one with the horns, that's the elite fights. Those are tougher overall. And the, the one with the horn that has a little flame is the super elite, which drops the key to fight the heart, but he's also an asshole that has extra buffs and stuff. Pretty much. The, the way that I tend to look at it is Less about going to a shop early, because if you go to a shop with like less than 165 gold, you're probably not going to be able to afford a relic. But my basic understanding is you want to try to take three, maybe four fights, right? You don't want to get into that hard pull, because a lot of times a bad hard pull fight can be just as hard as an elite, but doesn't give you the rewards of an elite, right? Yeah, I know, um, I know. You mean like when you get like the, the five gremlins and you don't have any attacks and, and... Yeah, or you get in act two, you get the avocado and and like the the, yeah. the, the rat. Like it's the very dangerous things that make you very hurt. So it's usually three fights and then maybe a good event or maybe a shop if you got gold early uh -huh. or maybe a campfire and okay. then you fight your first elite. That is usually the general yeah thing that i i like to look for okay. but 
there's one major thing that I look for in every single act right from the start, and that is pivot points. That is points where you get to make a decision based on how strong you are ah. um, and decide where you want to go from there. And I see yeah. a really, really good pivot point on the right side of the map at that first campfire, right? You oh. see that You see that campfire? If you're feeling strong, you can go for that elite. And you know that there's another campfire behind it, so all you have to do is beat that elite, and then you have a pretty safe act for the rest of the, the spire. Yeah, I see that. Right? Yeah. Or you can go left, and you can go for a hard pool fight, and then you can go for another campfire into a double elite later on. Like, how strong are we really feeling? Uh... So I think that planning your route around those pivot points mm -hmm. is really, really important, so you can make sure that you actually have decisions but sometimes you're just feeling really really strong going to act three or you're kind of have to take a specific pass because of the burning elite or you know whatever have you and you can go for that but i think especially early on having decision points is really really good i even think that that question mark on the second column right under the elite you can decide to go to the elite or you can decide to go to a campfire and then right. prepare a little bit more for the elite right okay. like there's, there's there's good pivot points like that uh, I, um, I have a question mr teacher Let's say that I am at the start of my challenge, right? I just lost the best run ever. I was super close. I'm back to zero. Right now, obviously, it sucks, but I'm quite relieved that I know that I can kind of fumble it because it's at the very start, right? Sure. Should I throw myself at the super elite now since I have it, a chance to do it early just to get him out of the way and then restart uh, if it doesn't work out? Or is that not a good strategy consistency-wise? I would say that that's a terrible strategy consistency-wise, especially since you have five fights before it with no yeah, campfire, with yeah, no upgrades, I, I and then did, another I did, fight afterwards. I didn't did notice that. Yeah, no, yeah, you're right. That but, would be an excruciatingly hard fight, which if anybody's going to do it, it's the Ironclad, because he heals. Yeah, yeah. So you, you have a little bit of protection. But if, yeah, I think going path, for the Burning Elite yeah. Act 1 is, is, is a decent strategy. I think it can be, especially if you're like, I can start out the challenge by going for the heart on the first run. I think it's a really, really good strategy. I mean, if you really want to like have the most amount of strategy with that, if you lose a run in act one and then you can just get Niao's Lament and you can snipe that burning yeah, elite. Yeah. That is That's a what I'm really, really good tool. So if you don't mind just restarting runs over and over again until yeah. you get that that can be a good strategy to start some other players will be like "Ooh, that's cheating that's, Ooh, cheating. that's you know <laughs> you're not being a respectable player fuck them who cares it's your challenge and if you want to like min max your strategy that much yeah. meow's lament is statistically hands down the strongest start in the game i think now, I, is I've it the strongest to go and snipe an elite yeah that is a different question because an elite spawns the earliest on on floor six and so you're going floor six with only getting three fights worth of rewards. And fights is where you're going to get most of your rewards. I'm taking some notes. Anytime you hear my game go quiet, that means I'm taking a note. Most Do you know how rare cards work in this game? Uh, th I think so. But now that you ask me, I'm second guessing myself. Uh, let's okay. see if I'm right. Okay. Uh, when you go to a shop, they give you two attacks, um, two skills, one power. They have a chance to be rare, but it's only a chance. It's not guaranteed. Any fight okay. that is normal has a chance to give you a rare card, but it's very small, I believe. Whereas when you beat an elite, it's it's going to be three. Uh, you know, the, the, I think the chance is higher. And when you beat a Ye boss, it's there's like three tiers, right? You you guaranteed to have three rares. Am I right? Or In a very basic sense, yes. Your rare percentage, the percentage chance of seeing a rare card starts at negative two percent so oh. your first card reward you will not see a rare card Why not? and every single time that you see a common card uh. your rare percentage goes up if you see an uncommon card it stays by, the by, same by how much i think it's one percent i'm pretty sure it's one percent and then it, it increases in the later acts to two percent three percent i okay. don't quote me on that it's been a while since i've taught people okay. but i do know that yeah. it works basically it's actually similar to potions you you're more likely to get yes. potions when you haven't had one yet right exactly no so this is the important thing. You are more likely to get, a, that's basically what it is, is if you haven't seen a rare card in a while, your your chance of seeing a rare card increases. When you see a rare card, regardless of whether you take it, it resets. Right. Unless it's in a shop. Oh. So shops can be really, really, really good, especially at one of those pivot points. If you have gone like eight fights without seeing a rare card, yeah. go to a shop. You're oh. really likely to see a rare card, maybe even multiple, maybe one's on sale and then it's a good price and you can take it. But 
that will not hurt your rare percentage, and then you will still have a good chance of seeing rare cards afterwards. In the next fight. And, oh. Yes. And yes, elites do increase your chances even more. They do have a slightly increased chance of seeing rare cards. So yes, it is good to go to elites. And once you see the rare cards from boss fights, it does again reset for the beginning of the next act. I can't wait to die on the first fight and not even see so, any of this. Let's go. Right, right, right. So basically, my, my thought process is, is as you're deciding what paths you want to go towards the later point of the act is have you seen a rare card recently because once you get to that boss it will reset your rare card percentage so maybe trying to take a few more fights towards the end of the act in order to just see that rare card before you see those three guaranteed could be really 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 smart Dude, and you guys factor all of this in as you're playing this dumbass game Wow, yes, but dude. we're not factoring it in literally by numbers. Like, I'm yeah, not counting you, the you, percentages. You, you I'm like just thinking, a, like, oh, I haven't seen one You keep recently. a lose. Yeah. It's kind of like with uh, with mm -hmm. potions, right? You keep a lose sense of, like, well, I haven't seen a potion in, like, four or five. The potions is actually really, really easy to keep track of, and I think your chat or an extension can help you. Yeah, You don't want to go with mods. Yeah, I see, um, I've seen a mod that just tells you your chance to get it. Seems okay. It's really, really simple. At the beginning of every act, it's a 40% chance to see it. Okay. And every time that you get to the end of a fight and you don't see a potion, it goes up by 10%. And if you do see a potion, it goes down by 10%. Oh. It's that simple. It's essentially the same. If you haven't yeah. seen a potion in a while, you're almost guaranteed to see a potion. And that's why you want to take those three fights before you take your first elite, because potions are extremely useful, I know. especially in those elite combats. So if you go through three combats, you have a 40, 50, and then a 60% chance of seeing a potion. So mm -hmm. by not getting a potion in those three fights, you got kind of unlucky. But most of the time you will, and then you can plan around it and use it effectively in order to defeat the elite. Because most Got potions will help you out in most elite fights. Gotcha. All right. Shall we have a look at what we have here? Let's try to rule out things. Lose all gold to remove two cards? I Insanely think... valuable. What? Well, I'm glad There's I... There's a boss relic that does that. That is a boss relic for free. And to get another boss relic, you have to lose your starting relic, and you could find that boss relic. So for 99 gold, you, have to, you get a boss relic right now. All right, and then well, you could also get that relic again and remove two more. And your starting cards are the worst cards in the game, so you want to remove as many of them as possible. That's uh, exactly once one hundred percent exactly what I was gonna say. Yeah, uh, what, what I was gonna say, okay. And I think this is a bit of maybe too advanced for me to even care. Um, is that I, I've seen some players stipulate that even though removing cards is very important, it also hmm. doesn't have the largest impact early on if we're focusing on things one at a time. Um, so I was going to say that maybe wasn't our best option, but damn, you kind of right. sold it to me. I think that's, I think that's wrong. So there are some fights early, namely the tri sentries that will make having a low amount of cards difficult, yeah. right? Cause they're going to add the same amount of cards to your deck, regardless yeah. of how thick your deck is. And then also in the beginning of act two, you're going to start fighting the chosen and in, in Ascension 20, they guarantee give you the hex on turn one. So you're going to start filling your 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 shit with with hex with with dazes immediately yeah um so that is actually a benefit i heard you say what oh i was confused because you said on ascension 20 but that's not that happens earlier than 20 right 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 right, right. that but happens on, on the, or something yes okay okay okay, yeah, okay. Just, i was I, when i say ascension 20 i just mean like yeah 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 by, by place, the so. time you're there sorry i just it just blew my mind to think that maybe there was more to ascension 20 than just a double boss <laughs> and i was like okay dude then yeah. Okay. 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 No, Sorry. so Ascension 20 is actually, it's harder in a lot of ways, right? Like, you know, the Gremlin knob is going to hit you harder on turn three, like whatever, whatever. But it's a lot more telegraphed because on a lower Ascension, you don't know whether Gremlin knob is going to do the big attack on turn two or if he's going to vulnerable you and then do the big attack on turn three, like he does on Ascension 20. Yeah. Or like the, the Chosen gives you the hex on turn two and does the, like he does a different pattern of attacks. The Avocado sometimes doesn't do the 21 damage on turn one. Like there's, such different patterns that are more random uh -huh. versus on Ascension 20, the patterns are harder, but they are more set in stone. Okay, I never thought about it that way. Okay, that's yeah. really good to know. But write it down. So there's... Write it down, write it down, write it down. Can I fuck it up and then and then you tell me? Because <laughs> uh, Max HP 7, I think, is a bad choice because this character does have quite a few ways to achieve this much more, mm -hmm. you know? I, I Yeah, I think that... On, on higher ascensions, you just need a little bit more going into the start of your run. So I think that just giving yourself max HP is not necessarily bad because it like the more max HP you have, the more you're resting at campfires, but also vice versa, the more damage you're going to take at events that hurt you. 
Okay. So there's benefits and there's not benefits. Uh, choose card to obtain, I think is a guarantee to be a common one. So it's not the most appealing, but it does give me a choice. So that's mm -hmm. nice, I feel. And loose starting relic was probably the one that I thought maybe was meta. And I think that this is a good choice in my first out of four attempts, because just like with the elites, I can kind of like YOLO it. Like say I get yes. the runic dome, which is that one thing that probably I don't want to get maybe i get killed immediately but well i can just restart right i wouldn't maybe pick this if i was like far into it but it seems like this could be a good um like early I, choice i agree a hundred percent swapping your starting relic more often than it doesn't will help you more often than not it is a the strongest start in the game so much though that high level players get bored with it right um okay. so here's the negative though is although you are more powerful you will be less use to the start, right? Versus you will be more consistent practicing with the exact yeah. same start of having yeah. your starting relic versus, oh, what do I do when I get Sneko Eye? What do I do when I get uh, choke, Choker? Yeah, like, what yeah. do I do when yeah. I get Runic Pyramid? Like, there's, they're very different play styles. Right. And so you have to learn how to do it from the start because they have mm. very specific things that if you don't achieve early on, yeah. you don't focus on it, you will flatline and you will lose. But they are all doable. It will just make you have to learn a lot more different a lot of different strategies but like you said it is insanely good on your early runs because if you do get one of those like free win strong relics like sneko eye like yeah you're like all right cool yeah sign he's, he's, me up for at least an act three win because i yeah. mean bludgeon is insane right like <laughs> okay so yeah. maybe for the sake of consistency since we're trying to learn all the characters through this one should i choose remove two cards i think so i mean that's what i would go with all right let's do it so obviously bash goes no just kidding uh obviously one of them would be a defend is the second one also going to be a defend or maybe a defend on a strike for the sake of balancing it all out a little bit what's my yeah i think, what I looking think at? I, yeah i think i think usually going for a strike and defend is is usually the best um ironclad is the the only character that has more strikes than defends and i and i definitely think on in act one you you want to be more aggression focused yes so the the main character honestly that i consider removing two defends on is the silent it, because she has those two extra defensive cards mm -hmm. and you just want to really focus on attack and a lot of times you'll go into your first elite and every single for every single elite in act one is just a damage check yeah right, right. the tri sentries yeah. mm -hmm. want you to kill an outside guy before turn yeah. before mm -hmm. the end of turn two lagavulin is gonna literally delete everything that you can do within like five or six turns i know and the ironclad is going to delete you <laughs> like it's it's yeah you're you're racing in damage versus every single fight yeah gotcha all right, that's good mm -hmm. that we're on the same page then. Um, yeah. I think maybe it would be a good idea to start. We want to reach this, uh, uh, you know, you you call that uh, pivot point. We want to reach this yeah. one. Maybe start in the middle yeah. and go up. I think you can reach that pivot point or the one that we described uh, with the question mark on the left as well. Sure. I think I think both of those are are really really solid. The one under the elite, yeah, that one. Sure. I think both of those are really solid, but I think that middle starting point is definitely good. And after the second combat is another pivot point. If you start in that middle path and you go straight up, you can decide whether or not which campfire yeah, you want to go to. If I that, get like a lot of fight. money or something. All right, let's start exactly. here then. Yeah, yeah. I think you're very rarely going to go to the shop. Um, but just because you gave up your gold. Well, this sucks already. Because even if I use bash, I can't attack <laughs> twice. This is a super terrible draw. But, yeah, I mean, then yeah. there is the the idea of then doing you two strikes there. Like, does that net you more damage over time? I it might have actually. Oh wait, why? Did, oh, I had four and I drew you one more. Yeah. yeah, true. I forgot about that. Oh, that was lucky then, a little bit. You did get. Um, those, yeah. Mm, I believe this always works out. The really nice thing about this character is that you stress a little bit less, knowing that you're gonna get six health. Mm-hmm. Basically, like, six free block is the way that I think about it. Right. Ooh. Wow. Well, this is interesting. So All of these have... cards are really good. Yeah, I was going to say, like, they almost all <laughs> achieve different things, right? Yeah. Like, Battle Trance is a super free card that almost has no imaginable downsides, I think. Unless you have maybe Sneko Eye or something, and then the cost zero cards are bad. And it would be really good later on when I have a lot of things and I want to find the ones that make sense for the time. So this would be like my middle option, right? This arm mm. is not as powerful early on, I think. But it's the it's the kind of card that against the heart is very good, if I remember correctly. It's uh, not only good against the heart, but it's good against the Act 1 boss you're facing. 
It's good against two out of the three Act 1 bosses. Because they do multi-attacks. Uh, yeah, Anything the, that does multi-attacks, you like. But things in Act 1 don't do multi-attacks. Other than the bosses. Right. So yeah, yeah. taking Disarm on Floor 1, a little bit early, but I love Disarm. Uh, as for the Battle Trance, you were saying that there's like virtually no downside. The only downside is once you get more draw on your deck, and also you really only ever want one unless your deck gets massive because yeah, you don't want to yeah. draw a battle trance with a battle trance. Yeah, no, that um, that much that much I think I've learned from experience. So that's awesome. And <laughs> and Cleave would just be like good old hit, you know, five five little uh, goblins at once. So that's mm -hmm. always nice. Uh, yeah. I'll so you're thinking about the right thing, right? You're thinking about what do I need to be able to do the mm -hmm. next thing. And yeah. AOE is the thing that you might need to do the next thing. And I think that uh, a really good strategy early on, especially on, a, uh, on High Ascension, is to just take what is referred to in the community as strike pluses. Fluff attacks that just do a little bit more than a strike. Okay. Cleave is, a, is, is against a single target is a strike plus. Pommel strike is a strike plus. Right? Like yeah, 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 taking yeah, yeah. those kind of cards are just like straight pretty, upgrades. They're, straight upgrades to strike. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And they're they're never going to be bad to take early. So mm -hmm. I don't think Cleave is at all ever a wrong choice here. Okay. But you can take the battle trance too if yeah. that's more of what you want to go for. I okay. think the disarm is is definitely the one that would be off the table just this early. Right. Okay, I'm gonna walk you through my mind what I would have okay. thought if you weren't here. I would have thought to myself, right, so battle trance is a bit rare. And, but I'm, I'm likely to see something like it later. If I need, there's there's other cards like it, right? Like uh, Shrug It Off, I will get draw, right? There's other options that can replace it. And Cleave is also a common card. And I, it wouldn't even be that crazy that I get another Cleave or another similar card, like, um, right. uh, you know. Uh, but I feel like this arm is actually fairly unique. I don't think we're gonna see something quite like, it's, it's, it's hard to replace. So I would have gone for this arm, even though I, acknowledge that it's like the worst card for the immediate future just because i feel like the other ones are easier to replace is that a is that am i overthinking it should i just go with cleave then i think i think you are overthinking the disarm being so unique because it's not necessary to have a disarm okay like disarm is a really really good defensive card mainly because it's like multiplicatively defensive against anything uh -huh. that does multi-attacks right like it's yeah. insane mm -hmm. but it is not the only defensive strategy okay. so if you were to get a corruption and a feel no pain and erase your deck, you're also going to get a copious amount of block. It's okay. going to block anything that that multi attacker is going to do. True. Um, yeah. So I think I think I would take Cleave here. The let me let me give you one more point on Battle Trance. Okay. Uh, what is Battle Trance going to do for you right now? Uh, let me draw the same shitty cards that I already have in my hand. Exactly. Exactly. You're very rarely going to be looking for something that you're going to need to play. <laughs> But if you take a cleave and then you I see can, a battle trance, I can and then draw you're like, this. Yo. that's so true. <laughs> awesome, yeah. But man. if you if you were to if you were to see if you take this cleave and then you see another battle trance, you could be like, oh shit, I want that battle trance for when I go against the AOE fight to make it easier to get to my cleave. I understand that hundred percent. All right, there we're go. going with cleave then. Let's go, boyos. Oh. Ooh, we like that. Mm. We definitely don't want to remove maybe a defense. I think maybe if we remove a strike, we can make another spot for what you mentioned another mm -hmm. strike plus you know uh, look for another no. uh, upgrade the way that i i look at it a lot of times especially on the ironclad and the silent is and even the watcher is keeping the number of strikes and defends as close to even as possible as you try to remove but in general i do remove a defend before a strike okay Ke in act one keeping the the deck going in the more right. aggressive way and then towards act two maybe i'll start removing one strike right. before so defend. so click but on yeah. leave so click on leave i gotcha Stop. I gotcha. Right. Um, so now we're 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 coming into a spot where we're like, our deck's getting a little bit thin, right? Yeah. So as we're coming up to these pivot points, if our deck is gonna remain this thin, we might want to dodge the first the first elite because of the fact that if it's we, against if it's centuries, centuries, we really might yeah. struggle, and we don't have anything scaling against the the Lagavulin against mm -hmm. Ironclad. We really just need a good potion. Yeah. Um, the, 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 the gamblers isn't going to be quite it. No. So I think what we're looking for right now is another combat or two and to try to get to that point that we feel comfortable taking an elite. Yeah. Finding something that helps us out against that first elite. Okay, my mind, I think, is following a similar um, path, I'd say. So cool. Uh, nothing, not, not much decision making there, I think. Um, since I am not a full HP, if I was a full HP, I would go full offense because I would heal that six back. I'm okay. not, so let I me, think. Let me counterpoint here. Oh. What's your deck look like? What's the what's the draw pile? 
Uh, let's have a look. I'm gonna kill this guy next turn. I think I can right. afford. So if you deal nine times two, right? That's gonna be 18. Uh -huh. If you have you do two strikes, it's gonna be 18 damage. You're yeah. gonna put him at 12, and you have 12 damage coming up. So yeah, it's yeah. absolutely correct to do one defend and two strike. Like it's um, question because of the fact that you, no, you don't need to bash. You, they don't need to be vulnerable next turn to deal 12 damage. Oh. Yeah. Should I have used two defense there? Was it better to like take even like does it often come down to like one HP or is it not that big of a deal? I think taking chip damage super early on is perfectly fine, especially on the ironclad. You net gained five HP that fight, right? Like you yeah. you went up in HP. I mean, this is um, acceptable. So yeah, yeah. Like HP is a resource in the early acts, and if you had not done that, right? If you had not taken that one damage that next turn you would we're gonna have to take one damage yeah. because you weren't gonna necessarily draw into the damage that was gonna kill them mm -hmm. they were gonna be at 21 hp and you did eight plus six is 14 plus the strike that you drew would be 20. you'd be one off lethal so you'd have to play the two defends you take one damage anyway i'm gonna pretend i followed the math exactly <laughs> but yeah i understand the gist of what you're saying all right here um we have a few options again we're given battle trance which is a really nice card that we just mm -hmm. don't maybe need yet and that doesn't immediately benefit us Especially Perfect. considering that if we get a really disastrous draw, I mean, we have Gambler's Brew, so that's even more arguments as to maybe let this uh, be a choice for later. Sir Good Boomerang idea. is, it hits people randomly, and it's, it benefits from strength a lot, which we are not really, we we, ha, we don't, we didn't find anything crazy strength-wise, so it's not It is scaling. one of the best strength cards in the game, but yeah, without strength, it's virtually useless. Would you pick it under the assumption that you're going to go there? Because right now, um, in my in my head, I, blood for blood seems like a solid choice. I would have taken it last floor, or if it was if it was instead of cleave. Ah, okay. I would have taken it as a strike plus. But here's here's let's let's think about blood for blood for a minute, right? We were just talking about chip damage and how it's perfectly okay on this character, and also it's yeah. like almost guaranteed on ascension twenty because like yeah. the the jawworm does twelve, that guy does six, and then eleven, yeah. and so like, you're like the, almost the, guaranteed. This guy can hit me four times in one exactly, turn, and then it's exactly. Free. And you know what Blood for Blood does? No. It makes your potion really fucking good. Because now it's a card that you want to get back to. So if you go against Gremlin Knob, you play this card twice and the Gremlin Knob's dead if they're vulnerable. So oh. if you if you vulnerable them, then you hit him with the Blood for Blood, and then the next turn you you gamblers were back into it. That makes your potion so much more valuable Ooh. than just like gambling. And we can gamblers do that because we three have strikes a for a three strikes. And we can do that because we have a thin deck right now. Right. At any other time, having a thin deck would have been bad, but... Yeah. yeah. Blood for Blood is an incredible card on, on Ascension 20. I highly, highly recommend taking it in almost all of your runs early on. If you see an early Blood for Blood, yeah. that is insane. It's Do so Do you good. typically get rid of it later on? No. No, mm. it, it can be your sole damage card versus the heart. Okay. Well, this seems yeah. fairly straightforward. Yeah. Mm. Cleave is already paying massive dividends. Uh, hold up. No, we're, we're fine, we're fine. Yeah, I thought we were 1 full. HP off, yeah. Obviously, best card. Insanely good. So good. You <laughs> removed so many defense. Why not? Yeah, true. Warcry here seems to have some kind of synergy. Because mm -hmm. if I say I have a turn where I know I'm going to take a couple instances of damage, nothing I can do to avoid it. But this thing is still cost 4. I could pocket it for the next turn. Knowing that it's going to be only two or maybe out of the odd zero. Mm -hmm. And kind of like have some control over the order. Is that is, is it like an automatic pick or does this card have a, some that, downside that I don't see? That is flawless thinking towards what you're doing right now. Um, like that is exactly what I would think and what I would explain. Okay. But I do think that Warcry does have bad times against uh, Gremlin Up, against oh. the Chosen with the Hex. Against oh, time eater, yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. but it Any, also then that punishes gets, you for just using stupid cards. Yeah. yeah, but then it also gets buffed once you get like a feel no pain or a dark embrace or right. whatever. It's because also, then it just it, it shifts into a different card. It just becomes right. like if it's upgraded, it's just draw three. Would some thought ever be given to intimidate since it can, for example, get rid of the three tricentry uh, artifacts so that I can weaken them? Or is it's that not a terrible idea? Or is that something um, you... I don't see you pick this card very often, I believe. No, nobody does. It's kind of dog shit. But the idea is <laughs> is that early on, I think the reason like why this card was created is the idea is early on, right? Like you're given five cards in every single hand and you only have three energy, sometimes four. And being Thank able you, to utilize as many cards as possible can be very enticing to people. So if I'm playing Bash Strike, 
that beat leaves three dead cards in my hand unless one of them costs zero like intimidate and then it makes you feel like you get to do something else but in reality yeah it's pretty dog shit okay <laughs> we're taking war cry then yeah i like it pivot point all right this fella yikes um i kind of want to see if i get a chance to do something else well you know what's uh, coming well there was no other option there right yeah not really I think this is the better play. Mm -hmm. And if we're lucky, we're basically just. This guy's always just. Yeah, yeah just he's just. Get out do with as little damage. amount of yeah. chip damage as possible. Oh, baby. Now you've got the big attack. There you go. And we're the big almost slam. Almost full health. And we get a fear potion. Nice. Ooh, that's so good. That's amazing. Dude. Okay. Oh. Right, so we have a lot of options here. Pommel is a bit like um, mm. the other card we discussed. That uh, it's like uh, it's like a strike plus of swords. It scales nice with uh, strength. Uh, perfected strike is a lot of upfront damage, but I mean we've already removed some strikes. Even I don't think we're too excited about this. Fire breathing, I think would go really well with the boss we're going against. Maybe I don't know, I, and specifically I against the sentries, but. I think less, yeah, it's really good against sentries. I think it's less good against the hex ghost, much more good against the slime boss. If you are against the slime boss, it's an it's an immediate take. Insta pick, really. I think every yeah. single act one, it's an immediate take if you don't already have. Oh like, yeah, because a way to I mean, I mean, him. if it if it damages for like six like, unupgraded, I mean, it's it hits every little shithead. Yeah, he adds five slimes to your hand, your your discard pile on turn two. Yeah. So like, if you have ten, if you have it upgraded and it deals ten damage, it's fifty damage, yeah. and it's AOE. So it doesn't matter when you split. Like yeah. it's yeah, that's, it's OP, that's what I was and it thinking. just keeps coming. That's awesome. Yeah. Would you Very pick good. it here, or would skip be a consistent? Um, I think I think skip is fine here. I think I think the only card to consider would be pummel. But yeah, I just don't think you need it. Okay. Well, I'm feeling strong. I have some potions. Um. Yeah, you're incredibly have, strong. Your potion uh, chance is low, but yeah. I mean, I think that when you have a full with full potions, yeah. going to a place where you are intending on using one is the best thing versus just like oh i might find another one i need to use one because i don't have one yeah. right like so i think that yeah also you got a really bad draw um i see i see some options here though yeah hold up yeah yeah hold up let me cook do okay. that i'm letting you cook do this take a bunch of damage yeah. now next turn i can apply vulnerable and maybe hit it for something mm -hmm. since we got rid of one artifact you. I'm with you. Yeah. It's a good draw. I would do this right now. Do you have lethal? I don't have lethal. One mm. damage off. So is it worth using your second potion here to maybe draw back into cleave or into your blood for blood? Mm. Maybe, but you wait, did just wait, get wait, six wait, wait. dazes put into your deck. Wait, wait, wait. Draw a card. Put a card from your hand on top of the draw pile. Nah, it's just going to make your gamblers be Yeah, worse. no, you're right. Mm. I mean, That's there's there's the question of whether or not you should do it, but it's like it's really really low odds. I think it's better to uh, just take the damage and do it next turn with five cards. Yeah, just one defend. Health is resource. Wait, wait, no, being... actu actually, I'd rather have the strike on the next turn guaranteed. So I should use Warcry right. and and pocket the strike, right? It's not a bad idea. Let's try that. And it also puts the defend into your shuffle, which is not terrible. Okay. Look at that. You drew well. Congratulations. Yeah, so your health is a resource, and mm -hmm. Hexaghost is the best Act 1 boss for that as well, because being lower on HP against Hexaghost just makes it easier early on. Yeah. Um, do you have lethal on this guy? Uh, I don't Team believe eight, eight. so. 60. Uh, I have 34, I, I think. Yeah, you're too so. off. Yeah, you're too off. It's off. Mm. Well, I guess it doesn't matter. Would a lot of thought should should a lot of thought be given to which one of the two I'm hitting, or I would have hit the other one just because the likelihood that you'd be able to kill him this turn and then avoid any potential damage. But you drew two, two defense. I mean, I got lucky. You got, did still got, have lucky. more yeah, defense the... in your draw pile than your than than strikes, so the likelihood was technically better. So I don't think there was a necessarily oh, a right choice. Or wrong. I get it. Not much to do there, I think. Um, I mean, am I okay taking five here? Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Right? So you, 
look at look at like the value of your potions in like how much damage is it going to save you? Mm -hmm. Like how much damage taken is it going to save you? And five damage like isn't super crazy because you think about it like a block potion is twelve, so like that should be your like yeah general your baseline guideline. right yeah. Mm -hmm. I gotcha. Also, Red Skull is fucking amazing. Nice. Red Skull is so good. I mean, if I go into a tough fight with a bunch of things, I'm hitting them for 11. Um, yeah. So that's nice. Any cards you, you like here? Mm, frankly, no. Thunderclap? I'm, like, we're very likely... I don't understand exactly how elites work, but if we go into another elite, we're very likely to go into the ones that are single targets so you're 100 yeah. percent chance it's 100 percent chance you will not see the same elite fight two times in a row yeah, inside only, of a will... fight node the only time you can see it twice in a row is through the dead adventure event yeah that yeah. yeah and if i were to fight four which i think is possible then you start to see them again right well no it's it's you you just can't see the same fight two times in a row so you okay. can literally uh, fight uh. 10 elites and never see one of them and just um, bounce back and forth between AB, the two. A, B, A, B, and not C. Okay, I gotcha. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, knowing that, that Thunderclap's not going to help me in that. It's not going to help me particularly on this boss, I think. Uh, Cleave, we already kind of have that covered, even though, I mean, it wouldn't be too bad to have the two. The teacher would like to speak for a moment. Strength is really good, right? Makes all of your cards deal more damage. It's not going to make cards that are more expensive deal any more damage than cards that are less expensive. So something like a Bash is still only going to get upgraded by three damage versus Thunderclap that costs one is still going to get upgraded by three damage. So then you're going to be able to play two other cards with it that also have an upgrade of three damage. So you're... Do you get it? Like you're stacking yeah, on no, 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 more no, no. strength I, I, I value. It. I get it. The, the, the strength value yeah. proportionally affects more the weaker cards. Like you, you yeah. wouldn't want this on a bludgeon or whatever. Yeah. Exactly, that, that much I understand. Yeah. My, my concern so, with Thunderclap was is this okay. not the type of perk uh, of... Sorry, not perk. Of card that because it doesn't upgrade into multiple vulnerabilities, isn't it a little bit of a dead weight later on? No. No? No, I think I think, I think think having like a solid form of AoE is really, really good. And okay. I think if you run into like a battle trance or something yeah. or some more draw and some exhaust, you'll be able to be play like Thunderclap Cleave or Thunderclap Blood for Blood a surprising amount of turns. Okay. Like I think, I think you will be surprised at how often you will have the resources. Okay, well, I can't say I... Saw it that way, so that's awesome. I'm learning. So you missed out on damage there by not playing the strike. I actually yeah. thought what you were going to do, I actually thought what you were going to do there is you were going to play one yeah. defend and two damage cards, and yeah. I was going to applaud you for it. No, um, I, I, I considered it, but you know what? I figured... The reason why I was going to applaud you for it is because your goal right now since you have your your resource is Red Skull and Red Skull wants you to be below half, yeah. is to stay below half. That's your goal right now is to okay. stay right around that half. So if you're just under half at 33, taking six damage, healing six back at the end of the fight, not mm. terrible because you're still going to be right around that same amount. That so I think, yeah, I think okay. you could have played one defend, but you can also play one defend this turn. I think it works out all the same. Okay. And the next turn, you're pretty much guaranteed to kill. Let's see if you're right. You, you have it. Do I? Yeah, oh, because the of the extra now. strength, of course, yes. Yes, yeah. thank you. And we're still under that magical number. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, Havoc. I mean, do we have... Whenever I see this card, this card just basically... It upgrades to cost nothing, and it just uses a card, and it's gone, right? So you kind of want to use this when you have cards that you just want to, like, just throw out. Not cards that need to be played at very specific times. Uh, yeah. I, I've, and used it's... It. I've used it a bit. Yeah, it's okay, and it's really good for when you have something like a Runic Pyramid and maybe a Warcry, so that you can, like, put a demon form on the top of your deck and then play it for free. Right, right? yeah. Um, it can be really good in that scenario. Scenarios where it's really bad is where you have cards that you want to play at specific times, like a Fiend Fire or a Feed, where you really do not want to yeah, play that yeah, with a yeah, Havoc yeah. and just have it get wasted or yeah. hurt you by exhausting your entire deck. A hundred percent. So, if we want more upfront damage, Reckless Charge gives us that, which is nice. Mm -hmm. And it might help us in the Gremlin knob thingy. Uh, the charge, yeah, it's it's okay, and it has a lot of synergies, and it obviously scales with the strength scaling of being able to play an extra card for plus three strength. Yeah. Um, but I also think that taking a shrug is perfectly fine because you have yet to take a defensive card, and you've taken yeah. four yeah. attacks. Yeah, that, that's why I left so. it for last. I think it's kind of the choice. Okay. All right. Uh, Do you feel strong enough to take another elite? Is that a trick question? Uh, my thought processes is that if I have two bad turns and I get unlucky draws, I die. If it's Gremlin Knob and I draw four defense, 
I might die. You don't well, have... I mean, I, I have. You know what I mean? You don't have four defense. I mean, I can draw three defense and then uh, a Sanders Bane and then one strike and then I'm screwed. Or, you know. That's fair. That's fair. So that's. I'm a bit scared of that. But I also think mm -hmm. that this is the time to take a little bit of that healthy risk. So I'm going to go for it just because I have a potion maybe to mitigate okay. that. So. Things to consider in the future. Um, if you look at your map, right now, this is actually, in my opinion, a. Not necessarily a weaker play but a play that is actually more scared in my head because of the fact that if you take that campfire, it sets you up nicely to be able to go for that double elite path on the right, mm. um, which you can still take because your your deck is extremely front loaded yeah. in damage. And again, you can go into Hexagos with low HP. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, I think that I think that it was mm. worthwhile considering the campfire, yeah. but I, I don't think the elite is the wrong play. I don't, I do not at all think yeah. that it's it's incorrect. Okay. It was I'm just your only campfire before the I'm not. Game. I'm not gonna lie, I feel like Unless we get something really good in between, these like this little corridor here looks scary, intimidating. No, it's not scary. But okay, especially since you like being low on HP. All right. Okay. All right, walk, um, me through. walk me through your thinking right now. Uh, okay, so we want to wait. Like there are a few things that we can make better by just by just hoping that they happen in the next turn. We can get rid of a Sanders Bane, which would be nice, right? Perfect. Um, uh, we could maybe even apply a, an unupgraded bash so that he gets the weakened, but he doesn't wake up so that the next he turn he has... He will because you're Red Skull. What? Sorry? Uh, he will because oh. you're Red Skull. Oh, you're so smart. Oh, God damn it. <laughs> yeah, good point. Um, well, sorry, that's conventional knowledge, but it's failing to notice the specifics of the situation. You're very, you're very right. I'm still waiting, though. Yeah, so I think I think that there's like specific things that your your deck tries to do, right? I think getting rid of the Ascender's Bane is absolutely the good play. I think that also knowing that your Blood for Blood was in your draw pile and this is not like necessarily something that you're going to play super early because you want to take damage before uh -huh. taking it. And so you can plan more around like trying to get a reshuffle to like having drawing those two defends was like, ah, shit. Now I'm not mm -hmm. going to have those two defends on potentially an attack turn because you can see your next turn right now is literally going to be all attack. So if they were awake right now, I would yeah, be. you'd be taking a little bit of damage. Yeah. I'm going to Big skip chunk. this one as well. I think that's out. Yeah. And I'm going to keep the Warcry because there will be a turn where I'll need to defend and I can't, or I'll need to attack and I can't. So I feel like it's maybe a solid choice. All right. So there's the curse gone. And this is, you I think, as draw. good as it could be, right? Yeah. Yeah. I think it's amazing because you have all of your defensive cards. You don't even need to play Warcry yet. You're... Um, so yeah. Bash and Cleave and that's it. Yeah. It's nothing else. Yeah. And then next turn, your ideal play is one attack with a Shrug and a Defend. Maybe a Thunderclap to keep them vulnerable for like a big Blood for Blood hit. Who knows? Worth it to use Warcry here to guarantee something next turn or no? No. Okay. Because you're not going to want to put any of the cards in your hand on mm. top. Like, okay. You're wanting your Defense. Yeah. This would be good. It would... Damn! Now, now we're really seeing the effects of that strength. It's just looking mighty strong right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I think I think I think a thunderclap is is probably the correct play, and then uh, three to uh, two defense, and you take ten. It's not terrible here, because um, you know you have the shrug next turn. Yeah. So. And there's your there's your perfect hand. And now you're gonna. Uh, I mm, okay. Let's look at our let's look at our look at our deck real quick. Let's look at the draw. So you're guaranteed to draw Blood for Blood and Bash um, if you wanted to because of the Warcry, but obviously you don't want to because you're not going to have the energy to be able to play it. No. Um, you need to take one more turn of damage before you can get that combo off. So I think that if you are looking, like, let's just do a little bit of math here, right? Let's do a little like a little, little bit of mathing. How much is a strike doing? It's dealing uh, nine plus vulnerable 13, right? 13, yeah. Yeah, so the 13 puts them at... At 56 and then next turn your ideal play is um thunderclap bash right to get them vulnerable for a long period of time okay and that's gonna deal they're not gonna be vulnerable well, am, so I, am i crazy for thinking that my play was maybe to use thunderclap and then blood for blood no no not at all so this is why we're like running through the scenarios okay right okay okay we're, we're running through the scenarios and seeing what does the most damage so you know that you can get them to 56 here right yes. if you wanted to play an additional damage card you can get them to 56. Next turn, if you wanted to, because next turn's a free turn, you could play Thunderclap and Bash, and that would be four plus 12. Well, no, four plus. It's uh, not even four, it's, it's 10. Like... Seven, it's seven. Oh wait, it yeah, seven, because it, it will lose the- Seven the plus, vulnerable. then the vulnerable on the Bash. Mm -hmm. 
That's 11 plus 0.5, so that's like 16. Yeah. Um, so that would be, let's just, I hate math. 49, 33. Get him down to 33. Would you have enough damage to kill them on the following turn? Because you can basically guarantee to draw whatever you want because your deck is so small and you have the Gambler's Brew, right? Yeah. So what would be your best piece of damage on the following turn after that? would probably be blood for blood another blood plus for like blood leave i think i can right? defend then he thinks he can defend yeah go for it i, I don't i don't i don't disagree right. so yeah you can uh, guarantee so we need to use war cry here wait wait wait, wait. Oh. okay okay let's what? think about this uh let's think about this uh you can blood for blood this turn but then they're not going to be vulnerable next turn or you can blood for blood plus another thing next turn with the vulnerable damage. Oh, I see your point. I don't know which one is better. That's why the math is there, right? Like, which uh -huh. one is better? Is it thunderclap, blood for blood, and then just three attacks next turn? That actually might be better. But this is why math exists, and I don't. Right. If you know it, if you're if you've done the math, tell me to fuck off. Um, you're gonna want to put an attack on the top because you're wanting to kill them next turn. Your goal is to kill them next turn. We so, just need to set up how to do that. So you said you want me to put an attack on top? Or yeah. I don't. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I, it's I, either I, it's either strike or blood for blood. Yeah, it's whatever you. Okay. Um, I'm gonna go the simpler route. It's 31 damage is incredible. And then next turn your strikes are dealing seven damage a piece. So you just need to. Run I mean, into we... a slight bit more damage, and you yeah. found it. It's a kill, right? It, I... Five plus. I don't know. Thirteen plus ten. Five plus thirteen plus ten. Five. Uh, Twenty six. This will do like fourteen. I mean. Is that killing, or do we need to find the blood for blood? Gosh darn it! I'm not too sure. Let's uh, do the math. Five. Uh, okay. Yeah, it's gonna 26. be twenty six. This will do more damage. This will do like. Oh, this will be thirteen. So. Yeah. 13, so I that's... I think I kill it, 13. yeah. No, no, you don't kill it. You don't kill it. No. No, because you're putting him to 13, and then what is the what is the strike dealing? Isn't, why? Oh, because I lost strength in the meantime. Yeah. You're not killing it. Okay, okay, okay. Um, so, I would hear... This, so, the, the what is the blood for blood is dealing 16 plus 8. So, blood for blood is not killing either. <laughs> right? Blood uh... for blood is 24. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it is a lot less. Well, no, it's plus three strength. Sorry. 16 plus three is 19. It is killing. Blood for blood is killing. So, so I think that it is best because look at your, look, if you look at your pile, mm -hmm. you are going to draw either blood for blood or you're going to draw. Uh, like, shrug it off. Shrug it off. The only brick that you have here is if you draw bash, defend, strike, strike, and then you lose. But that is a very, very, very low chance versus if you play two defense here. You live with like two HP, and you're just really, really low on HP. Look, come. Uh, sorry, uh, sorry, Professor. I just went ahead and, you're and good. pressed you're the good. button. Okay. Good. You're fine. All right. Jesus. <sighs> okay. That was too, that was so stressful, man. Jesus. We're playing okay. stressful because this is how you win on Ascension 20. Right. You have to play with your health as a resource. Okay. Well. Uh, resource just got a bit bigger, but it's still a little bit low. Um, right. What do we want to do here? Okay, so there are cards in the game that uh, I think Life Coach coined the term as upgrade debt. When you take them, they're only really good upgraded, like True Grit. Uh, True yeah, Grit is no, a card that I is understand. really only good upgraded, so when you take it, it unupgraded, it's upgrade debt, meaning that you are now putting a card in your deck that you need to upgrade at its earliest convenience. Otherwise, it's pretty much a, a curse in your deck most yeah, of the time. Yeah, I understand that. So there can be good times to take that card. A lot of times they're going to be bad. Um, I think if you hadn't taken Shrug it off, I think it could be a solid consideration. But since you did, yeah. um, I think Pommel Strike, especially with the Red Skull, I think is insane. Pommel Strike is the only card in the game that upgrades both draw and another factor. That's so nice, actually. No other card in the game upgrades draw and another factor. Okay. Well, uh, and get, and, yeah, it's incredible. Uh, obviously, Clash would make the game unfair, too strong, so we'll yeah, take you can't take that, yeah. <sighs> Tiny Chest is kind of like a shit piece. Of, it's kind of a shit relic. I think playing around it is like, meh. 
So, uh, it's unfortunate oh, the tiny chest. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because it's that. like, eh. it's it's not a relic. You no. didn't just get a relic there. You got yeah. a relic and four question marks, which is shit. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I know, I know. Uh, Anchor, yeah. however, is quite solid, I'd say. Yeah, Anchor is amazing. All the boat relics are so good. I think the mm -hmm. best one is Horncleat, the one that's turned two. And I know that because I watch um, Frost Prime ranks all relics in Slay the Spire. Wonderful oh. video, life-changing. Wow, wow, Se wow. Several wow. times. Okay, which one do you want to take here and why? Um, all right, well, I'm not gonna lie. Going to the left, it would give us a chance to get a lot of money, maybe, do some event. We could also get a curse, hooray. Uh, if that happens, worst case scenario, we can remove it immediately after, so that's nice. And then- okay, let's talk about that. So we talked about how much we hate all of our starting cards and we want to get rid of as many of them as possible. Uh -huh. If you add a curse to your deck, you're making that more difficult and I... then you're making it more expensive. Yeah, 100%. And so it's not terrible. I think there are definitely times and places to take them. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I think I think that thinking about it like that and keeping that in mind, especially if you have a full deck of strikes and defends, you've removed three starter cards. You're in a really good position right now. So okay. taking a curse wouldn't be the worst thing. But if you had a full, if you hadn't removed any, I think yeah. taking a curse is like almost never a, a thing. Okay. You just want to think about how many shit cards do you have in your deck, right? Right now, you have two or three defense, three strikes, six cards, plus your Descender's main. That's seven shit cards out of 14. Half of your deck is shit. Uh, that's a bit rough. It, my, fail, my deck feels a bit <laughs> offended, dude. I know you're saying it for the right yeah, reasons. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. <sighs> okay. It's not you. It's your deck. <laughs> it's not personal. <laughs> Let's go um, for a fight. So, can I explain why it was better to take a fight, at least? Um, uh, Yeah. You, you can say no, it's fine. I'll just shut up. No, 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 you, you kind of scare me, dude. I don't want to take more question marks in my life ever again after that. You, you just speak with too much conviction, you know? It's gonna... Okay, so, your every deck has win conditions, right? Yes. Um, Like, maybe you're gonna get, like, uh, a dead branch. Dead branch is a win condition, right? Or maybe you're gonna get a prayer wheel, which gives you two card rewards. So then normal fights is your win condition because you're gonna add, you're gonna get to see so many cards that you're guaranteed to see good cards eventually, right? Yeah. Like, so taking a bunch of fights is really, really good. Right now, if you were to take an event, you're gonna get, like you said, the option for a curse. You're gonna get stabbed by the wheel. You're gonna get, um, you're gonna, you're gonna take six max HP to get the the the, the gold idol, which isn't terrible. Gold idol's great, especially yeah. if you get all of the events later. Yeah. Um, you're gonna get the dead adventure event, which you're gonna be too scared to take because you're yeah. at 21 HP and that's I, uh, perfectly valuable. That's yeah. perfectly like you're perfectly fine to be. Uh -huh. Um, so yeah, I think that the events were not as good for you versus okay. taking a fight because your deck could still use a few more cards but i have and... tiny chests and if i do it four times maybe i get a relic that i don't need have you thought about that Ooh. Ooh. he could get the boot <laughs> <laughs> yeah no no you, you're absolutely right yeah okay and maybe you don't take damage in this fight and mm -hmm. you get plus six hp like this is okay. there there's a good chance that you don't take any damage here because of how strong your your just your strikes and shit are like yeah this deck is crazy strong and uh, you're gonna split them here so don't even consider playing that thunderclap because they're gonna they're you're splitting them so next turn they're yeah, yeah. yeah. i mean next turn you're gonna fucking kill them with this I much mean, goddamn strength we're lucky right oh that's not very good you're not lucky <laughs> uh, yeah, it's okay no, you're only no, taking four it's okay it's okay yeah you're only taking four it's Was there any chance that I could draw something so unbelievably good that it wouldn't even make me take any damage? I don't think so, right? No. Okay. That's really nice. Good push. Yeah. Um. Okay. I take the so, anger. I take it. Explain. Say it out loud. All right. So we have one, two forms of draw. Arguably mm -hmm. three. I don't know if this is even the same. Yeah, but, it's a net zero. Uh, basically, anger... It's going to maybe long-term counteract the effects of having burns in my deck by making it a bit uh, thicker. Yeah. Right. Yep. It's going to. Fucking perfect. It's going to do more damage just because we have so many for so sources of inflicting uh, broken hearts. Right. Mm -hmm. Um. So it I like seems, that. I like calling it broken hearts. Yeah. I I feel like it kind of like gives us a little bit. You know, it's like the salt you put at the end of your cooking. It's like oh, it just seasons everything. It seasons. 
our need. Uh, body slam, well, uh, I don't know. I feel like we're not tailored that way. Pommel strike, maybe it's good, so having two would be amazing, but I mean, we don't have that much energy to even play so many cards. Anger, Pommel kinda... strike, you, you gotta think about draw and like Pommel strike of like, you're trying to get to something in your deck, and right now you're really not. Like, yeah. Blood for Blood is great in like a boss fight to get to, but like, yeah, yeah no, I think the anger is absolutely the best take. You're absolutely. Langwin, right. thanks so much for the 43. I'm mute myself, don't worry, they don't hear, it. he shouldn't hear this. All right, Roger. No, everything um, you said was so incredibly smart. Okay, well, uh, keep in mind, I have absorbed a lot of knowledge from you and other uh, Slide Aspire content creators, so I might be parroting a lot without fully understanding it, so. Anyway, I probably would go shop here. I don't feel brave enough yeah, to go so here. Let's, let's look at your deck real quick. Let's, yeah. Is there anything in your deck that you feel like has been a little underwhelming in recent fights? Uh, Blood for Blood didn't come into play into the hallway fights, but I mean, that's expected. Maybe that's not a problem. Right. No, that, that is actually. Because Blood for Blood is a main source of damage. Yeah. And it's upgrade. Not only upgrades the damage incredibly, it also upgrades the cost. Mm -hmm. And weirdly enough, uh, Blood for Blood is, is whenever you upgrade it with armaments, will always decrease its cost by one. Oh. Which is really weird. Because like, you know, if you have like a Dark Embrace and you upgrade it with armaments, it's gonna decrease it to one. But Dark Embrace always costs one at when it's upgraded, versus Blood for Blood doesn't always cost three when it's upgraded. I fully but understand. But it's like okay. yeah, yeah, it's cool that it always decreases it by one no matter when oh, you upgrade it. Nice. But um oh, I didn't know. Yeah, that. so you can like use that for like a potion or something if it costs two and you need a combo, it'll always decrease. But yeah, I think Blood for Blood needs to be upgraded. It is really struggling for value right now. Uh -huh. And I think that in the the Hexagos fight, it's going to cost a zero already because of the multi attack. Yeah, the multi -attack. So yeah. Um, so we definitely that... we definitely want to stop by an upgrade before we maybe exactly okay that's... and you have the proper amount of gold. That's Getting what I was going to say. Over that 165 is yeah, really really important I, I, to I make wrote, a decision. I wrote that down. That's maybe when we can buy a bunch of relics and I mean that would seem okay. that would seem correct because we have at least a couple options. Mm -hmm. okay. What are you thinking? Um, forethought. I know it's your favorite card, so I'm going it's to the, not buy it so that game. you can buy it yourself. Yeah. Um, right. So, we don't have any self-imposed um, down effects, like like uh, debuffs, that we desperately need. But maybe Orange Pellet is a bit of a late-game investment? I mean, I know that, that is people... Yeah, that's really, really smart. Orange Pellets is incredible, especially versus the heart. It's good yeah. if you have a card like Flex. It can give you the permanent strength. Oh, yeah. True, um, true, true. Same with like flex limit break, right? You flex yeah. limit break, you'll keep four or strength. or with the flex potion if we were to buy that, but we would have exactly. to give up a potion. And and so a lot of times what you'll do is like, so when we talk about like the heart fight, right? Yeah. Um, we talk about preparing with specific things. Uh -huh. A lot of times that is a potion. A lot of times you'll see people take like uh the the speed potion, the plus five decks, uh -huh. and be planning. They'll take a speed potion and an artifact potion. And they'll hold it from like act two. They'll not <laughs> yeah. use a single potion for the rest right. of the game. So can just we, so they can, can have we... plus five decks in the hard fight. I'm also gonna explain one thing. Oh. Uh, Slay the Spire is a game of hindsight, right? Mm -hmm. It's a game of a lot of times you will make a decision early on and then you'll come to a point like this and you'll be like, well, shit. Um, and I think that Fiend Fire is kind of that well shit uh, because of the fact that we saw like multiple battle trances earlier and Fiend Fire pairs incredibly with Battle Trance, especially with the Red Skull, because yeah. yeah. Fiendfire's upgrade is like really, really interesting if you think about it, because a lot of times you can use Fiendfire when something's vulnerable, especially with this deck. Oh. And Fiendfire, when it is unupgraded, because of the way that rounding works, seven times 0.5 is rounded down, so it only deals 10 damage per card. But when it's upgraded and it's vulnerable, it's plus five strength, 15 damage. Like it just gets so much better when it's, when it's upgraded, and right now, you have the Red Skull, which has it permanently upgraded already. It is already at 10 damage per card. And it's on so I don't sale. even think it's... I don't even think it's a bad take here necessarily because you still have some junk and uh -huh. you do have some draw, so you'll like most likely be playing it for four. So four times 15, that's 60 damage. Wow. Okay. There's well, also the yeah. consideration of Limit Break because you have Red Skull. So you can go from four to six. Here's the reason why I think that it's not that good because you don't have anything that scales with strength right now. No, not like, at the moment. You, yeah, you have some decent cards, but like it's not really going to do a lot. You usually want to take the things that want the strength first 
after getting like a little bit. Like a little yeah. bit of strength is really Ma good for basic cards, yeah. but a lot of strength is only good when you have cards that go with it until you get to like exponential 999 strength. And then you're like, okay, I can kill anything with a strike. Mm -hmm. I understand. So with all this information that I just vomited at you, what's your thoughts? I think forethought is the play. No, just kidding. Uh, well, a lot of options are limited because we can buy multiple things, so we have to commit to something. Uh, we essentially can buy Finfire at a discount and then still buy something else or remove a card. Bingo. Um, but if we do basically anything else, including our Limit Break, it's just meh. It's just... Yeah, uh, so limit Break, I also think, is uh, an upgrade hungry card, I believe. I don't know if you agree yes with and that. no. With I mean, um, with, with yes how no. little strength we have right now, it would be because we would need it to be used multiple times if it even does much, right? Right now, because you don't have anything that it pairs with strength. Yes, if you had a sword boomerang or a pummel or a heavy blade, even yeah. no, okay. not necessarily. Six strength is incredible and way more than enough for those kind of cards. Mm -hmm. um, just I mean, getting it upgraded is not terrible, but I don't think it's needed okay. per se. Um, yeah, I think, did. like, anywhere between, like, the 5 to 10 strength range for those oh. kind of cards is really, really solid to sit at. Um, I I did, I did like that you mentioned that you could take Fiendfire and remove. I think that's a solid option. Um, I do think that we are just needing to pay attention to, like, how thin we're making the deck. But I think with the Hexagos fight coming up, you have Angers to multiply the cards in your deck. You have all of these things. I think it's not bad. We just have to keep it in mind going forward that, like, Hey, we might need to add a few more cards or we might need to take a draw card or we might need to do this or that. Okay. Um, I also think when you're in a shop, right? Like it's a great time to think about what is right in front of you. Like what's your next major goal? So if you look at the map, uh, your the next major goal is the boss fight. Unless you get the dead adventure event, but like even then you might not take it, but the boss fight is your next thing. So preparing for that is your main goal right now. And so thinking about things like how much HP do I have? Do I want more? Do I want less? I think right now your HP is literally perfect do you know how the the multi-attack works with hexagos uh yeah it takes your i started for the exam it takes your hp okay. divides it by 12 and hits mm. you six times for that amount of damage so exactly uh so let's round it right up to under 20. 24 so that means it will perfect. hit me for two six times which is 12 yeah. which is not a lot no but, but it's, it's perfect as well because if you block for like five or six or even eight with a shrug you'll still take like a few hits of very small damage but multiple times so that you can get your blood for blood costing cheaper right like oh. that's your goal in the early uh. turns is to like take a little bit of chip and so that you your health is in a good spot right um your let's 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 look at the next thing um we didn't talk about potions for this fight uh, <laughs> I mean, Liquid Bronze is very good for this fight, I believe. Amazing. It's actually so amazing. But... It's also really good if you cannot use it and use it next act for the birds. Uh, right, I was going to say, but I hate the birds. So, exactly. yeah. If I maybe use a power and I get a good power, maybe, or maybe I don't need any potion at all, but I'm likely mm -hmm. to get one, perhaps. So, I don't know. Like, I, I feel like I might want to even save this. But yeah, we do have good potions. I don't feel like we need this super badly. Oh, you have a, you have amazing potions. You have really, really good potions. So yeah, Thank I don't you. think you need to worry about buying a potion. I don't think that any of these relics are going to be an insane immediate power grab, except yeah. Ori Calcum. Ori Calcum is the only one that's going to give you immediate power, um, especially going into the Hexagos fight, because it always, yeah. they do six, and then six times two, yeah. and then six again, True. like and then nine. So like, there is immediate power to be had there. You also do have block cards. Um, yeah. I think that we can take the fiend fire, we can remove another card, and then we can aim in that last fight that we have to potentially yeah. find something that just kind of stupid nestles qu that stupid puzzle question. Together. Would it be there worth are. considering picking up a fiend fire and seeing red? Um, just for the fact that we do have a couple forms of extra draw, so we might, you know, benefit from the extra energy. Is that a crazy idea? I think you don't have enough draw right now, um, mm -hmm. especially with how many duplicates you have in your deck to be able to get it off. I think you need to have a copious amount of cards in your hand. So I think with like a battle trance, I think it could be solid yeah. or it's like a scrawl. But... All right. So what are we removing here? Um, what do you think? I think a strike just because we have anger. Anger is basically going to replace the strikes in the middle of the fight mm -hmm. already. Does that yeah. seem like and solid reason? You're... Yeah. And, I, and, and, and like also like act one is that damage race, right? And you're getting towards the end of act one. So you can think about, like we said, like pivoting towards getting rid of one more to stri strike. You have 
a little bit of you have more attack cards so like you need some defense right now so like taking away an attack is increasing your defensive output okay that sounded really fancy now we're poor and we move on oh yeah we do i'm not gonna lie without thinking too hard about it this would be the time where i would heal mindlessly just because i see the hp go low mm -hmm. so scary so scary yeah like i've seen you go into boss fights with three hp and come out without breaking a sword and it's just like what are you doing how are you how do you even move around with with balls so heavy you know what i mean carefully it's really sick. that is exactly my style i will wear I've it seen, i've seen your i've seen i think you're a connoisseur of high fashion so i'll send you one maybe i think you are as well yeah you definitely make sure you tell me your address and which times you yeah. go to i'll just sleep. say it out loud right now oh that good? perfect that yeah i mute myself don't worry dude <laughs> not even worry <laughs> you want to know something funny i have a streamer friend who accidentally order a pizza on their alexa and and the and their their device read out their address out loud on their stream oh man have you ever leaked because i've leaked uh maybe some time ago actually like some details but i think my community was just like that ah, we got your back yeah. dude like super lucky i know it's, it's very lucky. Okay. Well, pff, unbelievable value there. You just killed that left one right now? Yeah, you do. Go half lethal. Yeah. Uh, ooh. And that guy's dead too. Easy peasy. Uh, yeah, damage. not even close. 40 though. damage. Yeah, that's gross. One card. Yeah. All right. Well, 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 well. What do we have here? Uh, Entrench. Uh, doesn't synergize immediately with our deck because we're not we don't have any like mm. this I, I feel like i would consider this maybe if i had that um what is the defensive card that deals damage back uh firewall or something you yeah, know flame the one. barrier yeah flame barrier that's right maybe uh, maybe if you had that some cards like that and maybe mm. i don't know maybe you found some early calipers maybe you would want this right but it doesn't seem to call out for me am i stupid mm -hmm. for no, thinking no, no, that? i don't think you're stupid uh hemokinesis um. has an interesting um quirk to it and if that it would allow me to like micromanage my hp to end on like mm -hmm. roughly above uh, roughly below 50 percent yep but also it... allows you to help out blood for blood yeah oh yeah true oh wow yeah i didn't even think of that mm -hmm. uh the the maybe not so interesting part is that i don't think it scales super dramatically and if later we find other forms of strength i feel like it's not gonna be that amazing but i mean it's 15 damage dude like damn right so Here's a here's a here's a really good discussion, and it is around playing what you're wanting to do or playing what the game is giving you, okay. right? And right now, the game is giving you some strength, right? And that's great. Oh. Uh, but you also have taken some pretty big hitting cards that don't really scale that well off strength, like Blood for Blood. Um, yes. And true. that's also, like you said, it's also Hemokinesis, right? It's a card that doesn't really scale off that strength very well. Same with clothesline, but having a form of weakening is great. I don't think yeah, clothesline's yeah, the best card. I yeah. like shockwave. I like uppercut better. So I, I, I think that uh, I think that you could consider the hemokinesis here. I, I I don't know whether it's correct or not. You are getting like a little bit leaning heavily towards a lot of damage, um, like a like just a little bit too much damage maybe. But yeah. I also don't think that you're quite there yet, especially with the fact that fiendfire helps you like thin out your deck like if, if you I need draw to. fiend fire with all of your attacks you can be like okay this is more defensive fight i need more of my defense um right now do you feel strong enough that you're going to beat the boss with your current deck frankly i i i feel like i have the damage i just don't know if my hp is very good i feel like if i get a bit unlucky or if i make a mistake or two like he might just delete me health uh, there's hp a chance. wise there's absolutely a chance okay um there absolutely is a chance I'm, so, I'm, I'm happy with my but cards otherwise, but... If you're happy with the deck, mm -hmm. right? If you're saying, okay, this deck does beat the boss seven, eight out of ten times, right? Okay. Perfect. Now let's start thinking about the next act. And I don't think that Hemokinesis is going to be the best card for the next act when you're going up against, like, the Avocado. It'll be good against the Chosen. Mm -hmm. um, it won't be that good against the Baseball. Maybe it's okay, but, like... You know, you're just trying to now set up for what do you need to do next act? And a lot of next act is alternative forms of defense. A lot of things make you I, frail. Also, so, yeah, I would also... Hmm? Wouldn't it be nice if we had, like, an immolation or something to deal with, like, the, you know, triple birds, um, the... You have the some, to deal two, with the birds. No, no, sorry. Triple cultists. Um, okay. You know, like, I'm, I'm thinking, like, yeah. 
Maybe, maybe we want to skip everything here. Is that a crazy thought? I think the skip is perfectly good here. I think that it, it, in my head, it's like 60% skip, 40% hemokinesis. I see. Oh, that's this a great is draw. Holy. Fascinating. Can we? How much damage is Thunderclap Fiendfire? Because it'll be 15 times three you kill. Oh, that's it's, now. It's that. Here's the. Here's the. Oh. Here's the question. Oh. Do you want to heal? What do you heal to? You get to 35. 35. Not above half. Good. 35. Right below 36. Perfect for the Hexagos. It's a perfect kill. Run me through that one more time, please. So you want to remain below half. That's goal number one, right? Uh, 35 times two is 70. Wait, wait. So you're still below half. Do, do, do I, do I, or, or would it be acceptable to be a bit uh, like a smidge above and then just go under half after I take some damage? Perfectly fine. Oh. Perfectly fine. But it's, you know, you're, you're going to, Hex Ghost has a, has a blank turn on turn one. You get, you're losing yeah, out on damage. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, That's true. But being right below that, that multiple of 12 at 35 when you heal for six, fucking perfect. Really? You could not be in a better position here to kill. Oh, him. you're so right. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Oh, that is a, that is a fucked up potion to offer you. Look what? at the card word first, and then we'll think about that later. Yeah, sure. <gasps> this arm wasn't that right after man. all. Oh, man. man. That's a lot of blues. Oh, that nice. is a lot, a lot of blue. Did you notice in the shop, we hadn't seen a rare card in a while, and we were offered two, and one of them was on sale? Uh, yeah, of course. I certainly took notice Ooh, of that Sub man. subconsciously. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. No, no, I, I understood it when you explained it to me, but by then I was mm. distracted by your other explanation, so I did not realize. Yeah. Um, yeah, would, it yeah. Be, would it be fair to say that second win here is a bad pick? Yeah, you don't have enough stuff. Yeah. Uh, Shockwave. Very cool. Although, honestly, we already have so much broken hearting. Uh, mm -hmm. We can do so much breaking of hearts already that you, that, that part yeah. seems a bit redundant. So you do a lot of that. Also, it's expensive. Yeah. And if you're not... There's a chance that you don't take an energy relic here. Yeah. It's just going to be awkward to play like Shockwave, Fiend this, Fire, This would be awesome like if I had four energy or a corruption already, no? Or like a bloodletting, dude. A bloodletting would just make that, make that, make that, this deck sing right now with blood oh. for blood and having a little bit of draw, having some expensive cards. Blooding, bloodletting right now, it's one of my favorite cards in the game. Okay. I think it's one of the best. So, so disarm, disarm is... not only is incredible in this boss, basically just like, hard counters as boss so good in act two you got yes. the birds you've got the chosen you've got the avocado you've got the baseball that it, you know it's hard to make them vulnerable or it's hard to do things to them but like it's still there multi-attack the 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 stabby book does multi-attack gremlin leader does multi-attack um like so many things in act two do multi-attacks all right it's incredible instant um, take. Hmm. Okay. this potion here is really really interesting and let me let me explain why okay um so it's not always random, right? Like sometimes you have four or three cards on top of your deck yeah. and you're like, I know exactly what it's going to use. And also it's basically just three draw. Like if you have something that you need to get off by turn two, like like for instance, this, uh, this disarm, you really want to get that off by turn mm -hmm, two mm -hmm. and then just like tank the full attack yeah. and get your blood for blood to cost zero, oh. right? Um, also what this can do, perfect scenario here. You have three cards left on top of your deck. Shrug it off, pommel, fiend fire. Shrug it off goes first, Pommel goes second, and then Fiend Fire. It oh. makes you draw more cards, and then you get more cards for your Fiend Fire. Wow. Jesus. So we skip. <laughs> so it's I, just a really fucking good potion, but yeah. so is power potion. So I think yeah. it's I think we can agree that we probably want the the Thorns potion for next act. Mm -hmm. Um I'm taking this. So yeah. I think it's I think a bit more I, exciting. I, I, I would take it. it. I'm a sucker for distilled chaos. Probably do a fall. Alright. Um is there, assuming that right now my mindset was, all right, dude, like it's not looking too bad. We probably, we should oh, maybe aim for the heart. Right. Would you ever take the the ruby key here? Or is there, because no. I find like in a later acts, there's sometimes times when I don't need to heal. I don't need to upgrade. I'm kind of yeah. fine. I just take it later, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, th I think it, unless you have like apotheosis bottled, yeah, you're, you're going to be taking it here. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, Ray, thanks yeah, so much for the prime. Appreciate it. it. Yeah, you're always going to okay. be smithing. Yeah. Okay. So, um, um, or best, or best so, smith here. What is it? What do you think it is? Anger, no. Uh, not a bad one. Whoa, no. Anger's not a bad one. Anger's no, not a terrible I, I upgrade. Know, I know it upgrades not, every single one that you met. It's, yeah, it's I know. I know it's actually, it's not too bad. Like, I, and no, it was surprising to me when I saw high level players, like first upgrade Anger, and I was like, huh. Yeah. It makes sense, really I guess. Uh, I mean, we have explained earlier, 
that Pommel Strike upgrades two parts to it, which is awesome. A bit extra damage, a bit Amazing. extra drawing. Uh, these arm, I actually think we might not even need the extra so, one. there's actually a reason here why the upgrading this arm could be even bad. Because I want to is... take damage for blood for blood. Exactly. And it's going to deal three times six to you on turn two. And if you make it zero times six, that card is going nowhere. And you didn't take Hemokinesis, so it's going to be expensive. So uh... I think that if you're planning on playing it for turn two, which you should, I think that it's not the best. But yeah. then if you're planning on lit not killing it by turn six, then it's you know but i think it's i think it's not the best upgrade here i think pommel is definitely up there i think war cry could potentially be up there i think fiend fire is also insane and just always worth the upgrade because yeah. it just scales multiplicatively with your cards and as yeah. you get more draw but also pommel makes your fiend fire better too so does war cry mm. let's go with pommel I like it i like it i like it i love it all right oh uh, huh. It's not a terrible turn one. Okay. You don't want to put blood for blood on top, but I definitely think they're getting anger on turn one. Making sure, because like, if there's a there's a world here where anger's on the top of your deck, right? Yeah. And if it's or it's, or it's on the bottom of your deck, sorry. Oh. And if it's on the bottom of your deck, huh. you're gonna draw it as your deck reshuffles. It's gonna so be lost among gonna, all the other. Yeah, ones. it's yeah. like you got to go through another shuffle in order to get two angers back to multiply more. So getting it first rotation, mwah, chef's kiss, amazing, huh. love that. Um, here's where we consider. Do you like this start enough to uh, need to not need to use the Thorns Potion? I also think that playing Warcry to be able to dig for like a Bash is not bad. Uh, yeah, I was thinking about that because right now mm -hmm. we could use Blood for Blood or Strike Cleave and, you know. Like, mm -hmm. like if we Warcry, we could potentially get something where we don't have one energy left over or something. Right, yeah, yeah. I'm going to do that. That's good. That's a, that's a pretty that's good card. That's really good. So now yeah, the order would be Thunder, player. Cleave, Strike, Angor. Absolutely. And I don't need to use this now. I can always use it next turn. If you, you can use it next turn, yeah, obviously. So there's yeah. no reason for me to, like... You're feeling a little bit risky. We've done... I mean, almost... Or more than... F yeah, f what, 49 Did damage a full or cultist, A full <laughs> cultist worth of damage. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna say that we, from now on. We need two and a half <laughs> cultists. Well, well, Ooh, well, look at that draw. Mm, beautiful. Now, I think that if you, if you look at the top of your draw pile, if you didn't have Fiend Fire, I would potentially play the Distilled Chaos here just because like you're not getting much more value if you're wanting to let your Blood for Blood go down in cost here. I do think that there is also value because um, if you look at what your draw pile is, right? What do you want to do next turn? What's your goal? Uh, I mean, next turn he will hit me for six. Am I right? Minus two. Uh, okay, it will hit me for six minus two. Um, I can maybe even tank it, contributing to blood for blood being even cheaper by then. Mm -hmm. I can maybe do a little bash mm -hmm. and do a strike if if the draw, you know, and yeah, maybe like assume I don't draw fiend, uh, fiend fire, just do Best a bash, scenario. just yeah, maybe don't even maybe don't even use pommel strike so that I mm -hmm. draw fiend fire next and then I'm ready to use it because the worst case scenario would be drawing this when I've already used two energy and I can't use it. Exactly, I agree. Um, yeah, so, I, I I agree with that entirely. The best case scenario is you draw bash and not fiend fire next turn. Uh, we're obviously playing disarm, but now the question is is do you want to defend or do you want to take make uh, sure that your blood for blood already costs zero? Because next turn if you're tanking four to make blood for blood cost less, it'll go down to one, right? Because you take one damage here, it's gonna cost two. Then you're gonna take four damage next turn to make it cost two, or to make it cost one. Yeah. So it's still not costing zero, and yeah. you've taken one less damage than you would take this turn if you just guarantee it to cost zero. Because well, there is a chance that you draw um, Fiend Fire in your hand next turn, and you draw like Bash, Pommel, Fiend Fire, whatever, and okay. you play Bash, Pommel, and you'd redraw into it. Like, there's a lot of different scenarios. <sighs> um. Just basic self-preservation would tell me, just make it cost two, it's perfectly okay. And my HP isn't so high, or, like I can get carried away, get a couple bad turns, draw right. some flames and just die, and I'd rather not. Okay, so. I, okay, let's consider the last thing here. Oh. Uh, do you want to use your potion since you're not really making much headway this turn on damages? Yeah, let's. Do you? Yeah. You do? Okay. I'll do. Perfectly fine. Since I have things fin, to consider. Uh, since just I have fin fire I, and, and thunderclap mm -hmm. and anger, I also have other ways to deal with the birds. Absolutely. So it's you absolutely no, do. Disarm also works. And you have out disarm. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
So Absolutely. here, do I want to take one damage just for this? I think so, right? One million percent. All right. So we dealt 18 damage thanks to our little potion. And we had the best case scenario. Mm. Yeah, actually a, actually a pretty good draw. I think I think uh, bash and then a defend to take zero is pretty solid. Or you can take the four like you originally planned. All is good. Um, and then having pommel next turn to get the most amount of options in your hand since uh, things are going to start costing low, especially like you said, if you wanted to take the four, you would you can pommel into blood for blood or uh, blood for blood. You can pommel into your angers. There's so much to draw. I have a question. Um, you could even pommel into have, fiendfire. Yeah, I had a question. If I use okay. distill chaos and there's only one card, will it? It'll will, play three. It'll reshuffle. It will reshuffle. So my idea then, let's just go balls to the wall crazy. Um, mm -hmm. Use the potion. We draw this, we'll attack with this, maybe draw something else, maybe use an attack or two. Then we have God knows how many cards in our hand, and we still have two energy. No, actually, we still have three energy, and I can use Fiend Fire and just blast this thing into oblivion. Okay, let's do some math, because you're going to be getting rid of like most of your deck to do this, right? Yeah, you're going to be playing Pommel, true. which is not going to... The thing is, it's not going to put Pommel in your hand, right? So you know yeah. you're going to have Pommel, because it's going to play Pommel. Best yeah. case scenario, it uses... Or draws you Thunderclap, uh -huh. right? Right. Because right. then you want, like, yeah. you really only want to use Fiendfire here when they're vulnerable. Because, right. I mean, if you draw two yeah. more cards, um, and then it plays Thunderclap, so you even get to play, like, Shrug It Off or something to block this hit, whatever. Yeah. Um, you're going to have seven cards in your hand. Uh, so that's uh, six cards is the hit. Six times 15. Okay. What is that, 90? Uh, I believe so. 90 damage. Can you deal another 100 damage? With your remaining cards, I think as long as you have one anger, the answer is yeah. yeah okay. Because anger is just going to multiply those few tiny, that few yeah. small amount of cards left. So I think that I think you're on the right track. I think Distilled Chaos is not a terrible idea here. Come on. Oh, wait. What? Did, did it just play two angers, or am I crazy? Look at your look at your discard pile. See what it did. Look at your discard pile. Oh. Just played two angers. Well, no, it played a strike and an anger. Oh, is that so? I see. Mm -hmm. Well, that wasn't too bad. Yeah, I mean, I definitely don't think you want to do the thing because you don't want to get rid of your blood for blood, but... Okay, am I crazy for thinking that maybe I could delay this planet down a bit more and just shrug it mm -hmm. off and bash or something? Would that be a crazy uh, what's idea? In your, what's in your draw pile right now? Uh, I could get Those a... are good cards. Those are... Yeah, there's a one in four chance that you get an anger, but yeah. you could also want to play those cards next turn, so maybe yeah. shrug it off isn't the best since the okay. defend is no, already just, full just to the just to the defend, yeah, then. Yeah. I'm going to do that just so that we don't find ourselves mm -hmm. with three cards on our hand and 25 burns, you know? All right. This doesn't look too bad. No, not at all. Um, bang, bong, bingo, bongo. Perfect. Uh, Kraken Nuts, thank you so much for the bitties, by the way. Dead. Oh, look at the damage. Uh, a oh, cool animal. Oh, look at the damage. It's gross. Um, I'll get back to your Next turn, you're killing always with... Um, Use an octopus. If you play Blood for Blood and Anger here, uh, and bash, you're always killing next turn. Uh, yeah, you're pretty much guaranteed to draw the fiend fire with okay. the shrug it off, right? Like, there's a very low chance that you don't draw the fiend fire. Even if you don't, yeah, it's yeah, fine. Yeah. You're just going to take a little bit of damage, mm -hmm. but you're always going to kill. If, as right. long as they're vulnerable next turn, you're mm -hmm. getting them under 60 and 60 kills. Right. Uh, sorry, I was a bit distracted, but I, I followed and it, I think this kind of plays itself. Um, yeah. Is there a reason why. I don't want to use. Do I want to use pummel now? I don't. Do I? Combo will put you to six cards. If you draw Feed and Fire, you'll do 15 times five, which is not lethal. So, yeah. I want to go this, that, this. Take the bit Bing, of bang, damage. Boom. And uh, there's your lethal. Bye-bye. We did use two potions, but I mean, Jesus. You lost two health in that fight. How will I ever recover that? from that? You lost two health oh. and you got healing and you got a massive heal for when you need it mm, yeah you're still under half you're in such i mean you're gonna heal you heal half. three fourths of yeah. your remaining health right missing so, health yeah. yeah of your yeah sorry okay what do you think is the best here all right so one by one there's Immolate, one there's sure. yeah i think i know where the uh, let me just i don't know um do you think no but, think it out this is smart yeah uh, I'll go from least likely to most likely. Uh, least likely, maybe it's a limit break. Limit break is it still has all the downsides and upsides that we talked about earlier. If we take this, we kind of have to make a leap of faith that we're going to get some form of strength, which we could easily not get, and then we have a 
mostly dead card. Not to mention that if by some form of another I don't have Red Skull, then I mean, I have a card that's doing nothing. Immolate is yep. very attractive because for two of the three potential elite fights that I'm going to have to take at some point, uh, it's doing a shit ton of damage. It's a very good card for this act. So if we're thinking in the, in the short term for that, it's very, very good. We also have okay. ways to even get rid of the burn later and turn it into an asset with uh, Fiendfire. So it would kind of cover my strengths and weaknesses. It would kind of like even out my offense, right? So that seems really good. And then I, you know, I, I like this card. But then we have Offering. Offering draws extra cards, which makes Fiendfire do what? Like another 30 or 45 oh. damage, which just is insane. Yummy. It puts me back into restful range. It also Beautiful. lets me use all of my high cost cards should I have the need to. It also can draw Massive. extra angers and then bingo oh. bango. And it also makes you moan, which makes me think I should maybe skip it. No, I think I think Offering is the most amazing card. Um, I think Offering is one of the best cards in the game, um, simply because it's a card that you never need to upgrade, but its upgrade is so amazing. Like, yeah. two more cards, yeah, so five. incredibly good, especially five. for your Fiend Fire. You didn't even mention that it makes your blood for blood better. Like, it's... No, 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 it's, I, I I don't know if I mentioned it, but I, I factored it in. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah, good. It's, it's just like, it is... It's so amazing. It's so good. <sighs> and it deals six damage, and you heal for six damage, so if it helps you block, it's basically free. All right. Um, so, uh, well, that was easy. We beat the game in a session 20. Thanks so much for us. It's been lovely having you, man. You know, we're like an hour and a half into this. Yeah, I know. But I mean, <laughs> I mean, to be fair, if you think about it this way, right? When I fail a million times, which I'm going to, mm -hmm. guess what part yeah. of the game I'm going to be back and forth. If I, if there's ever yeah. a part that I need to learn, it's probably this, right? So. Absolutely. Mm. Oh, okay. This is... <sighs> All right, this is uh, okay. So this is giving me the Runic Dome. The Runic Dome is probably like the most advanced relic in the game, I think, because it it essentially removes the information that an enemy gives you. Now, many of the enemies left in the game uh, will have sometimes static or relatively predictable moves. So if you're Frost or some other 5,000 hour Andy, then you can just know by heart what every enemy is going to do ever and just act accordingly. But I'm not that guy. So I think this is just a bad pick unless I am feeling... I want you to become that guy. That should be a goal. I will, I will, but I acknowledge that I'm yeah. not there yet, I think. Yeah, I, I also it should think be your goal be... to become that guy. Because like we talked about earlier, yeah. uh, the high ascensions are harder move sets, but they're more predictable. Yeah. They're very set in stone. Okay. Um, so yeah, gotcha. it's... It, it, the, the Runic <sighs> Dome is the one relic in the game that gets better with high ascension. Right, okay. Uh, then we have a little purple box. This takes mm -hmm. all of my strikes and defense, which as um, Frost eloquently put it earlier, are dog shit, and turns them into yeah. other cards that could or could not be good, but that on average are better. Now, the right. only thing that scares me a bit about this is that, I mean, the, the rest of the of the deck is like, it's not like we're missing anything that this card provides. So this is a, this, this seems like an op, like a solid choice. Um, yeah, I think I think Pandora's box is hands down the strongest relic in the game uh, for like the earlier that you find it, right? Like, because yeah, obviously as yeah. you go, you're gonna get rid of more cards. This could have given you nine transforms, yeah, instead of Question. instead of five, right? Yeah. Um, quite. So that's why it's the strongest thing to boss swap into. If you boss swap into a Pandora's box oh. and you lose it, you're dead to me. But <laughs> I've done it. But okay. it's 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 difficult too. Like it's every single card in the game is better than a strike and defend, unless you literally get a brick of of all defensive cards and you can't deal damage in any way, yeah. there should not be a reason why you shouldn't be able to win with it. I got it. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. I would I would give you two counterpoints so that you can walk me through my reasoning and tell me why I'm mm -hmm. wrong if I'm wrong. Number one, okay. even having stupid strikes and stupid defense could maybe be not the worst thing ever because we're just burning them with fiend fire and maybe we get a corruption at some point and that could be awesome for the defense just to like... Pew, pew, pew. So... Considering that we've taken care of a few common of a few starting cards and we don't have that many strikes and that many defense, is is that something that makes you like this thing a bit less, or is it still like, oh no, now it's even better? No, it's it's absolutely worse. Yeah, the the I, you want it to give you the most amount of value. Mm -hmm. you, you like, it's a boss relic. It's supposed to do something incredible, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, then there's the um, black star. The black star is I don't know if you agree with my definition. It's a bit of like a win more thing. 
It's not helping you do anything, but if you pull it off, well, now it it it, it multiplies your success. I think I think pulling it off is a is a bad word to use. So we've talked about wind conditions right now, right? Uh -huh. Where we've talked about it a little bit, and right now your relics are helping you, right? Like anchor is amazing. Yeah. Red Skull is kind of what we're playing around. Like we're we're making sure that we're at low HP. Yeah. Blood for blood is amazing. It's free six block every single fight. Tiny chest exists. And yet, with all of that, right? Like, with all that, like, they're all right. We don't have Your deck any feels incredibly salt. strong. I mean... Right? Yeah, but I... Your deck feels good. Okay. Um, And so, when your deck feels good, and you have that win condition already for the immediate future of, my deck feels good, I can survive off of my immediate deck, I don't need immediate power to go into the next act, that's when you can take Black Star. So yes, you are right. It is win more, but I don't think it's necessarily a pulling off maneuver more as it is, is your deck already strong enough to deal with the first, second elite with no boss relic? Could you skip this boss relic and beat the first two thirds of act three? I think the answer right now is yes. I think Black Star is an absolute consideration here. Um, I think Pandora, I think it's a toss up right now between the, the Pandora's box only because you have only five cards to transform. Um, it could give you amazing things. That, cause, so the thing with transforms, you have to remember, is they don't give a fuck about rare cards. Everything is weighed equally. So Wait. you are just as likely to get rare cards as you are common cards. Wait. It's, literally, you're looking at the 70 cards, 73 cards that you could possibly get. Is that so? 72. Yeah. And it's but, just going to uh, roll okay, all of them. Okay, can you walk mm -hmm. me through that so I make sure I, I didn't misunderstand it? Because I think, I think you just cleared something up for me that wasn't mm -hmm. in my knowledge yet. If you transform yeah. a curse, it stays a curse. We know that. Yes. It'll always stay as the, the type of card that you have. So if I transform I mean, if it, yeah. a ultra rare, super cool, golden, pink, whatever card, it doesn't have a higher mm -hmm. chance to be another one of the same type? No. So you're telling me that in like 20 runs where I transform golden cards trying to get a feed for my stupid achievement, I was wasting my <laughs> goddamn fucking time? Yeah, you were. Fuck. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I don't like this anymore. I'm uninstalling this. All right, gotcha. Yeah. Uh, Black style, That's let's the thing. Go. It's like you are transforming five of the worst cards in the game into potentially the best cards. Or they could be just annoying cards. Like if you got a uh, demon form right now, you'd be like, ah, yeah. I don't really want that. <laughs> like at least the strike does nine damage. All right, so we got, uh, we got um, the collector. Collector's fine. Um, all right. Collector likes big burst on its face, and that's what you're kind of good at. The collector is like a glorified gremlin leader fight. And I think you, I think you, I think you soar in a gremlin leader fight right now yeah. with the ability to deal to, like a hundred damage to like off just, of a fiend fire. Yeah, we can in one turn yeah. and then hit for like zero yeah. gorillion yeah. damage on the next. Mm -hmm. I got you. All right. So since we have the black star, which will give us more relics, uh, maybe what we're looking at here, and tell me if my reasoning is solid, is for the chance to fight elite, maybe with some healing in between, just in case. So I, I would maybe look for a column of like elite rest elite or something. And I think yeah, I see I mean, that. I, yeah, I think I think you can avoid like, again, your cards are pretty solid, right? Yeah. Uh, like how many more fantastic cards do we need to find right now? I mean, to, Not be, that many. to be fair, Not that many. to be fair, how okay. am I, how am I defending most of my turns right now? I'm, I'm like, I'm just, you're not, you're just winning. Okay. Uh, fair. Yeah. <laughs> all right. All right. Yeah, that's true. You're that's not, true. you're just like, I'm, so, yeah. Yeah, I think that I think that looking for as many elites as possible, uh -huh. uh, question marks in Act Two are usually the best. Uh -huh. um, and also, uh, you are looking for um, as many elites as possible. And if that means that there's a path that finds you the fewest amount of normal fights, so you have the least amount of chance of taking those massive swings right. that are just unlucky, weird draws, yeah, yeah, you don't I get gotcha, the right gotcha. cards. Gotcha. Yeah, so looking for a path that has those pieces of campfires, maybe a shop. I think that early shop, if you take those two fights yeah, right I'm, there at I'm, the bottom. I'm, I'm looking at this. Um, here's my mm -hmm. rationale, right? Uh, easy pull fight, easy pull fight, shop, buy some stuff, window shop, you know, whatever. Question mark, question mark. Next question mark, maybe here will give us mm -hmm. something cool, maybe. Um, yeah. Fight, rest if needed, or upgrade if you needed. You know that's a hard elite. pull fight, right? This one already? Yeah, so in Act what? 2 and 3, it's only two easy pulls. Ah, oh, shit. Uh, so this could be something like the cleric and the knight, for example, or mm -hmm. avocado and rat, right? Yeah. All right. The elite ah. that's not an elite. What's that? Sorry. 
the, the in Slay Spire terms, the avocado rat is the elite that is not an elite. Oh, Because it really? is stronger than most of the elites in Act 2, and it doesn't give you I any. didn't, I've never heard it's, you say that, or if I did, I forgot. It's such a shit fight. Okay. I fucking hate that fight. I've tried to familiarize myself with the terms you use so I can understand them better, yeah. and it's kind of funny that everyone has, yeah, uh, yeah, their own quirks. All right, got it. I think I say this path then, ahead of me. All right. You mm. like single targets. Single targets is your friend. Uh, um, what do you think? Well, I mean, this is, uh, what? 28 damage up front, get rid of a bunch of cards. That's not too bad. Nah. I could just joker. I could just damage here, uh, a vulnerable for next turn, and then next turn maybe I get some insane stuff, so maybe that's better. Yeah, I think so. And also, like, you gotta remember, you like being in blood for blood range? Or in, uh, in, in Red Skull range? Oh, yeah. So, like... You don't mind if you take a little bit of damage. I do. Early. I'm yeah. scared. I'm terrified. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but thanks for the vote of confidence. That was a terrible idea. I just realized since we're out of the Yeah, thing. it was. It's okay. It's okay. The offering makes up for it by drawing all yeah. the bad cards. Ooh, uh, that's that's wow. You could not have drawn better. Yeah. That's Who is good. this guy? Do I even disarm? He does do double hits. Is it yeah, worth he it? Does a, yeah, absolutely. All right, let's go. He's still. Yeah, no, I might be able to kill him. Ooh. 22 is fine. Mm, mm, 22 is fine. It's mm, okay. You know about that. Oh, look at that red skull. Wow. Well, You're going to heal out of it, but that's I fine. I will heal out of it, but that's it's okay. fine. You also have a massive potion that helps you out so much. That is true. Okay. Well, 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 well. Well, 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 well. I think it's time for a battle trance with fiend fire. Fuck uh, yeah, it is. I mean, offering and battle trends do have a bit of um, counter, mm -hmm. um, counter synergy, if you will, but only yeah. if you draw one before the other. Otherwise, it's yep. actually really good. I could offering, use some cards, get more cards, fiend fire for one trillion damage. I think we Rain take this, cooking. right? It's not a, not even... is, yeah, it's, yeah. I, I think armaments is the only other thing that's yeah. That, that one, that one but... would have been okay. Armaments is like upgrade debt, right? Yeah, like yeah, you yeah, need yeah, to get yeah, it yeah. upgraded because you want to draw a billion cards and then upgrade them all. Yeah, and, and armaments is like the most effective when it upgrades energy costs, especially with something like offering. Oh, okay. Well, um, this is why the anchor's so good. Yeah, it's helping us so much right now. <laughs> um, um, I would have put blood for blood on top there oh, because if you draw did, offering next turn, I'm you'll so make it sorry, fun. I'm sorry, I didn't realize. Yeah. yeah. No, that was really stupid. No, I made a... I don't know why I... Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, hold up. No reason not to do this, right? Yeah. This thing has multi-attacks. Maybe this arm is okay, or maybe we're just doing so much damage that it doesn't generally matter. I mean, I'll... your defense are, are weakened right now, so I think disarm is yeah. insanely good. It's literally one less than defend right now. Yeah, but next I know, be more. but it's... Uh, let's do damage, honestly. Sure. Yeah, you can absolutely be playing aggressive right now with the way that your deck is working. Okay, hold up though. Can How this thing you got? kill? I don't think so. We're doing um We need like 70 and we're not there. Now, should I use offering or would be that would be a different offering, story. I think yeah, I think offering absolutely gets you there. Yeah, it's, see I'm you're very comfortable being super aggressive and dropping your blood like you're a you know, but as if you're in a hospital ready to donate. <laughs> for a blood drive or something. I'm that's not something that comes naturally to me. I'll be completely honest with you. Yeah. That's fine. Uh, that being said, I think our play is bingo bongo. Oh, well, I mean, there were multiple ways to end that, but oh, much damage. All right. Yeah, you're in such a good spot right now. Oh, uh, headbutt gives us uh, utility since it allows me to like prepare. It, it it's it would have been helpful in some of these fights where I'm like, oh, I want this card, but next turn. But is it yeah, I think it? it's a it's a little bit bloaty right now. Yeah. Because you didn't take the Pandora's box. Right. And so like the yeah, times it's... that you're going to be able to like because like you want to be able to play play headbutt, get a card back, and then redraw it with like offering or battle trends or something and be able to use it. And like those times are gonna be very low right now. I think it could be good in the future, but you can take it in the future. It's a common oh, card. Oh, I didn't I didn't think about that. Right. So I could like mm -hmm. use a use a certain card twice in the same turn. No, okay. 18. Sorry, somebody in my chat said 18 cards is bloaty. No, 18 cards is not bloaty, but it's bloaty you're... because it's bloaty because I haven't gotten rid of strike and defense, and you know it's yeah. like yeah. So no, I, 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 bad cards. I, within within the context of my deck, I understand what you yeah. meant. I think, and the other mm -hmm. cards are simply not worth considering. Body slam has no 
obvious synergies with anything that we're doing. Uh, cleave is nice, but I mean, we already have one and we have, yeah, we're fine, right? We're good. Skippy. Uh, I oh think, yeah, we uh, the say, shop is amazing right yeah, now. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh. Yeah! Oh, baby, okay. Fuck, yeah, oh, that's what we want to see. Oh, okay, we see some stuff here. We see some things. Uh, unfortunately, uh, there's not a lot of things that we can afford together. Like, we can't buy too many things on top of each other. Uh, oh, we can unfortunate. But, I mean, there's one option that just stands out, right? Oh, yeah. Transmutation. <laughs> uh, feel no pain, right? Just because mm -hmm. of the insane synergy that it would have with Fiend Fire. It would, in fact, kind of cover for the weakness that we, mm -hmm. we kind of have, if you can call it that. And it's the fact that we just well, don't yeah, have in, anything in, in, to block. Act 2 is, is all about alternative forms of block. Half the fucking enemies make you frail. That's Half true. the enemies make you not. So and you have to have the alternative take the orange forms of black. Pellets, so yeah. Yeah. Well, you don't even have enough power to use the orange. Yeah, pellets. I know. Like, I you, know. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So I would. I think Fiend Fire is uh, snap click. Like. Yeah. Like there's also, no someone effect. somebody in my chat is asking why are you backsitting me, and that's a really good question. Like, who asked you to be <laughs> here, dude? Like, did we like set this up in advance or something? I talked about it for weeks. Like, I don't think so, man. Who my are bad, you again? Bad. I'll stop. I'll stop. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know these guy guys. Help. A big assault right now. Yeah, okay. Um, whenever you play an attack, a game three block. That makes sense. And we do have anger, but we also have big attacks that just do big oomphs. And maybe yeah. like yeah. like blood for blood and fin fire. So maybe this isn't mm. so insane. Maybe this, maybe rage could be considered if we had some kind of like, I don't know. So kind of like infinite going on that, I don't mm -hmm. know, flash of steel or some, like I, I can't. Works. Yeah, it, it, one needs upgraded and so does feel no pain. So they're, you know, you'd be taking two things that need upgrade that. Mm -hmm. Um, but also, uh... Um, Fiona Pain is a, is an upgrade heavy, it's an upgrade hungry card, uh, I think? Yeah, oh, oh my god. Yeah, I mean, you're making it 33% better. Like, it's... It's a crazy amount better. You say Every single of... card gets one more block. Yeah. Okay. Um, but yeah, I think they're both upgrade dead, but I think... I think Rage really synergizes when you get into, like, the Juggernaut scenarios, where you're wanting to deal damage with your block, with the barricades and the body slams and the things like that. I think oh, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's less that's... about using Rage as a defensive card and more about using it as an offensive card. Oh, wow. I never thought of that. Yeah. Or it's just the did. way that I found it, it's more useful. Okay. Okay, that makes a lot of sense, but it's also exactly not what we're doing right now. So we buy Feel No Pain, and after that, we can afford some Potion. Um, my mind tells me that we haven't seen one in some fights, so the chance right now, you told me that it starts at uh, 40. Yep. We should be at 60%. In the next fight, maybe we even get an event with some potion. So maybe we don't need it. We just save so that by the time we get to the next shop, which we might, might, maybe, maybe. it's better to save it. Is that a good assessment? Yeah, no, I don't think so. I don't think I don't think you're wrong at all because like you're really close to a card remove. Like you might even find a shop in two question marks. <laughs> that's true. Well, not in two question the marks. Chances... That's not in two question marks because we have tiny chest, right? Well, the tiny chest is in three. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, no, you're right. Right. Um, well, this is a simple one, right? Is it? I think so. What do you uh, think? All right, so I've heard it said that as a, gene as a general rule of thumb, as a general rule of thumb, if you're getting five upgrades or more, this is typically worth it. And we're sitting at the point where we are exactly at five. Okay. But sure. If um, we are I don't think that's I don't I don't think that's necessarily bad um a way to think about it. I okay. don't I think though that because the rest of your deck is so good, the thinner that you make the 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 thinner that you make your deck, the more likely you are to draw the better cards. So okay. why do we need to make your bad cards good or better? Oh no no I, you just, I, I, I think yeah. you misunderstand me. Like like I agree with you. Like I am leaning towards removal. Oh, okay. So yeah. I, I was going to say that as like, okay, let's start there, right? So we're mm -hmm. at the five point, but my my point is that, yeah, I mean. You can get to the four point where then it wouldn't yeah. be worth to do it. Yeah. Look at okay. that. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> like if our other cards improve this very much, mm -hmm. then it would make sense. Imagine that we took that smooth stone, right? Or that we had, yeah. I don't know, fasting or some crazy stuff that make the strike or we had some strength engine that just makes me have 99 strength so a strike is actually a decent card then maybe i would be like oh yeah maybe i want to keep it 
But we, yeah. ha we have the opposite. We have an engine that burns cards, right? Yeah. We want to get to mm -hmm. it. So remove a yeah. card and... Uh, I'm leaning towards a defend just because we picked up Feel No Pain and I feel like we're trying to keep that balance. Is that a good assessment or should, should we remove a strike so that defense can be fed into a corruption or something lately? later? That was exactly what I was going to say. Well, he's thinking so well. Uh, yeah, that's what I was, was going to say is like, yeah, the defense can be more useful for later in the game, especially if you like, since you have so much draw right now. Remember the second win that we found earlier that was like, hey, it's not that good. With more spells and all the draw that you have, second win's now pretty fucking good. Right. Especially with feel no pain. It just right. is scaling so much better and better. Right. Um, so I think I think you're absolutely right that like it's always the general rules of thumb are always just general rules of thumbs that should be assessed as you go. Yeah. And I do think a strike is slightly better right now to remove. Got yeah. it. Yeah. Incredible yeah. value. Incredible value. <laughs> uh let's take that. Especially when you want to heal above half all the time. Yes, yes. I want to be at 1 HP to trigger yeah. my, my good rally. Yeah. <laughs> all right. I'm sorry. going to say no. Well, Ooh, I you mean, predicted the I fight. called it. Yeah, this sucks. Yeah. I mean, this guy does double attacks, but also hits for like 14. So I don't do you, really... Do you know how the attack pattern in this fight works? Um, yeah. No, no. I know what they do, but I don't know the exact order. Uh, I'll tell you everything yeah. I know. I'll spit it out and then you feel it from there or do you want to just walk me through it one by one i know some things i'm not completely oblivious but no no i just think it's smart to know like what your general goal should be in this fight okay um so the cleric always is going to heal if you uh deal 20 or more damage to the to the guy in the front what so if you can just like consistently hit him down she's like almost always going to heal I'm pretty sure it's always but never quote me on things okay um so if you can do that, you know that she's not going to attack next turn because her oh. attack is annoying. Because again, it frails you. Another thing in the in the in the act that frails you. Um, he has multiple attacks, and then he also has the defend move. That defend move is replaced with his times three attack if you kill the mystic first. So that's why you always see people going for the centurion first because you don't want to unlock his seven times three attack. Pretty annoying. Yes, I remember all of that, but type it down just in case. Okay, some of those things I knew, some of those things I, I, I understood, but I didn't make the connection the way you said that. Mm -hmm. Hopefully I caught everything. Fiend fire up this guy's butt, do a bunch of damage maybe. Is that a crazy idea? Or should I use bash? Trusting that I'll get so, some more damage later. I think that the fiend fire is a fine play, because again, you get him under that 20 threshold, so that she's going to heal next turn. Um, I also think that disarm isn't as good in this fight, because your goal is to not let him do the multi-attack. So yeah. weakening him when she's just gonna buff his strength, not the greatest thing in the world, right? <sighs> like it. So yeah, uh, it's what, not what, that what good is of a the, card. Where, when does the buff of strength happen? Is it like every fifty or so? She's doing it right now. She so she she will on turn one yeah. she will either do nine or she's gonna she's gonna buff his strength. Right. Um. Uh, or she, and then after this next turn she will always attack you, unless you deal the twenty damage and then she's gonna heal. Okay. Could you, does the initial nine also inflict frail? Mm -hmm. Every yeah. time that she attacks okay. you. All right, fin fire. Boop, boop, boop. Yeah. And there's a chance that you just kill this guy next turn. Uh, pretty I high you're chance. Actually, this guy actually. This turn. yeah, I think, I think you're killing this guy um, next this turn. Hold up, is there any value of using? You want to war cry last. War crying last, because like if you dig right now, you're just gonna dig for a card that you're already gonna draw with offering. Sorry, could you walk me through that one more time? I I think you spoke another yeah, yeah, language yeah. in my head. No, you're fine. If you war cry now. Yeah. And then you put a card on top. You're just going to find the oh, card yeah, that, that you're it. then going to draw again with offering. Right. But if you're offering now, yeah, and you right. get to the end of your draw, yeah, you'll then so, draw so I'm, one I'm, more. Yeah, I'm, I'm, o I'm opening a box, putting something in, closing it, and then opening it again and being like, wow. Oh my god. H hello, I put that in there. Hello, friend. What are the odds? Yeah. yeah. All right, lovely. So, I mean, getting a thunderclap here might be good, right? Yeah, absolutely. So, what do you know? Wait, do I want to get rid of a Cinder Spain here? You're going to draw back into it. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> I'd play Pommel first. You have enough energy that it doesn't matter if you draw the Thunderclap after one attack. This guy's always dead. He's dead to the cleave. Hold up. And like an anger. And then would she's it, taking would it be better too. to kill her? And prevent the healing? Absolutely. As long as you have a strike in your top of your drop pile. But if you don't right now... <laughs> You just play the battle trance. And then now you have a better chance of drawing better things next turn. Yeah. Solving puzzles. 
That's what okay. the game is. <laughs> Easy kill. <laughs> Alright, well, what's the... What's the... Uh, does it matter what I do here? No, not really. <laughs> He's dead. Alright, good. And we're still within the threshold to benefit from the Red Skull. Even though we still don't have a card that really pops off with it. No, Arguably. just you do. Um... <laughs> Okay, Havoc is probably not something... Like, this seems to me like a deck that we need to control very carefully. Mm -hmm. If we play, say, I don't know, like, uh, I, don't, uh, I don't know, like a Disarm when it's not good. Plus, Disarm... Yeah, like, on the wrong target. Yeah, is it like a random target? Yeah, or... Yeah, it would be random. Yeah. Yeah, so that would be really bad, right? So, we don't we don't want uh, Havoc. Body Slam? I mean, it's interesting because we are going to generate a lot of block. But at the same time, we're going to generate after we burst through all our cards, so it makes yeah. not a lot of sense. And demon mm -hmm. form, I mean, it's it's giving us something for the it's long term. It's something, but it's but like it's too slow. Yeah, it's so slow. It's incredibly slow for the cost and everything. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah it's sucks that that's what you saw because now your rare percentage is 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 deleted. Oh, but right. I, yeah. yeah, it is what it is. Oh well, happens. Skill show. Uh, if we were to heal, I mean, that wouldn't be the craziest thing in the world, but... I don't think you need to, um, because of the fact that you want to stay in Red Skull, because it's like, there's a chance that you just get against a slaver right now, that you and, I can just... slavers, and you can just burst one guy. <laughs> right. And you have the healing potion. So if you really feel scared, you have a campfire in your pocket. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right, so what would be the most impactful upgrade here? Feel no pain is extra block, but... Mm -hmm. It's also a, like, it's a conditional card. I, I can't just draw this and use a turn one and be like, yay, like, whereas offering, getting the five extra cards, I feel like that's going to be amazing. Uh, I like the line of thinking. Uh, Battle Trance is a bit quieter, but sim sim similar idea. Mm -hmm. uh, Thunderclap, I think, is a pretty low upgrade priority. I think it's, like, the one card that we don't need to upgrade ever. The very yeah. opposite of depth. Um Bash would be nice, but since we don't have an energy thing, many times we get Fiendfire Bash and we use Fiendfire, so Bash is eating dirt right now. Uh, Fiendfire would be an amazing upgrade as well. Uh, and keep in mind that... Well, I don't I don't say that as if you don't know it, but I'm trying to walk myself. Oh, no, no, you... Yeah, don't, I'm not trying to, like, like, uh, like uh, be a... Like talk you back or anything. Me, Ats? Excuse yeah, me. Yeah, I'm so sorry. Um, keep in mind that if... Out of the two elite fights... Two of them have an enemy that if we burst it down, it's over, you know? One, yep. because it's only one, and the other, because there's, like, a leader, right? If you kill the big leader, the small guys scatter. So, Fiendfire damage would be good. Then again, Offering also does kind of that. Fiendfire upgrade, or, yeah, Offering upgrades Fiendfire more than upgrading Fiendfire upgrades Fiendfire. <laughs> uh... Yeah, and then also upgrading offering also helps you like in the early stages of the Gremlin Leader fight, like find AOE or the Slavers fight, find yeah. AOE or find enough to burst. Yeah, I think I think offering is really really good play there. Okay. It's good. This is a good this is a good fight. The fact that they're attacking you on turn one. Um, I would use Warcry to see if you can't find another way to kill without having to play your blood for blood. Disarm. You don't. Disarm um, on big so guy. Good idea or now. Yeah, so here's where you come into like your idea of what you want to do. Um, the gremlin leader is not going to attack you next turn, so you know what's going to happen. So if you yeah. tank the sneaky guys ten damage, which you're going to be able to do pretty effectively, um, yeah, I, th I think I think it's perfectly fine to like put blood for blood on top. You're going to take a little chip damage, and then you can feel no pain, disarm, defend, and you're sitting pretty. No, 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 order. Oh, because it's a uh... feel no pain. All right, quit, abandon, run. Uh, I didn't realize. Yeah, my bad. Yeah, no, you're fine. You're fine. Um, we can just all type minus three in the chat. Yeah, I, I think this is the kind of thing where if I actually had played this character a bit more recently, I would remember that this is a exhaust card, you know? So I would yeah, have no, had no, three fine. more block, which, you know, is probably going to cost us the whole run now. Congratulations. Uh, thoughts. Yeah. Liquid Bronze could be used. We haven't had a potion in a very long time, so I think the chances are very high. Uh, just I could... Liquid bronze. Oh, did we? Oh! Yeah, it's oh, still pretty high though. Oh, I, I think you're I still at like 50, I thought, 60%. I thought we carried this from Act 1, I just remember. Oops. Yeah. No, no. It's not bad to use it. Um, yeah. No, I, I think it's not bad to use but it. But it's maybe even better on the book that we could be going up against, so. Oof. Yeah. Uh, I'll hang on to it for now, I guess. Yeah, I think you're fine. Oh, yo. Don't be scared of being low. You're oh, okay. All right. Uh... It's so scary, though. <laughs> uh, okay. okay. Do you know how the percentage of chance uh, works with Gremlin Leader's attack pattern? Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, but you say it first. Okay. You say I, it so I know that uh, you know it. All right. I um, know that if I kill the gremlin little bastards, he will summon more. No. Okay. Well, uh, wonderful. So after the buffing attack, or like after this buff turn, um, or after the summon turn, the gremlin leader will have a 50% chance of attacking you. So there's a... Uh, but since the, if there are two or more gremlins, they're always going to attack. So right now, after this buff, gremlin leader is always going to attack. If you kill one gremlin, there's a 50% chance that the gremlin leader will attack, 50% chance that they will summon. Oh. If you kill both, so there's no gremlins left, there will be a 20% chance of getting attacked and an 80% chance of summoning. Oh, and then so after they guaranteed. summon, it's again, 50% chance of being attacked, 50% chance of being a buffing. And then, so yeah, basically killing the little guys massively reduces your chances of getting attacked. Which we kind of need right now because we have 20 health. Kind of. Okay. To figure out a way to kill. Okay. So, this guy cannot be allowed to live, I'm afraid. Yeah, they're going to attack you. Uh, they're going to hit me for like more HP than I even have. So that's not very good. So I probably need to get rid of him. Okay. Uh, so my idea... Is there, a, is there a way that you can kill both? Yeah. yeah. Well, what? Is there a way that I can kill them both? Mm -hmm. Um... Like seamlessly? Am I missing something? Uh, I'm just asking. I'm just. I'm just saying. Like, I don't think so. Is there a I way think, that you can get both kills? Yeah. I think I need to kill one. Yeah. My, I think. I think you can always draw here because you're gonna play Thunderclap, Blood for Blood. So I think you can always yeah. draw. See if they yeah, get no, anger offering. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Oh. Oof. Nice. That's big. Is it? Um. I mean, yeah. We yeah. can draw because quite a few things, right? Yeah. Yeah. I think getting to offering here is just like the most important. Even if you like wait, offering wait. and get no draw. Hold up. This. Should I thunderclap into Pommel Strike? Would that be lethal on little mage guy? Um, uh, I think it's short, but not quite. Maybe. Seven plus nineteen. No, it's lethal. It's is it? Yeah. Okay. So we probably want to do that. Now we can play Ooh, offering. That's hot and sexy. I'm running out of health here, dude. Oh, oh you're not. vulnerable is so big now. I think okay. you just killed a guy. I think I think that is a kill. Um, Especially with blood for blood first on yeah, the gremlin leader, yeah, I was and gonna, then I was, fire. I was like, gonna say, just, fifteen. Yeah. Uh, you can you can not, you can see for, for my audience. I count like this numbers up top. Tell me the amount of cards. Obviously, this one doesn't count. So we have seven cards. Seven times ten multiply by one point five. Should be enough. I think you're four short, which is fine. Oh, because you're gonna draw some damage next turn. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> that was impressive. Hi, love, what? No, I'm okay. I need to super focus Holy on this. Holy shit, look at this guy. <laughs> the boot? Oh, uh, no. It's incredible. Damn. Damn. So this is what I got the black star for, so I have the boot, man. <laughs> this is terrible, man. I'm sorry, I... I think that farm gold might have... Led us to better decisions. Man. I'm sorry. Smiling Mask is really good, though. Smiling yeah, Mask this is, is amazing. It's not, to be, it's yeah. not to be slept on, but it's not immediate value, so it feels bad. Yeah, it feels a bit bad. Yeah. But... Relics that don't just, like, immediately next fight make you feel super strong are always like, oh, no. Okay, I think there's one thing here that's better than everything else. Uh, Go on. Oh, uh, I... Do you want me to walk you through my mind here? Yeah, yeah. I, li I like this process that we have of going through your mind and then I tell you whether right. or not you're smart. So it's clear, especially with the smiling mask, that we're gonna be looking to remove some of the fluff in our in our deck that still mm -hmm. remains. That's that includes some of the defense. So switching a defense for an armament seems like a good idea. We have a a great amount of cards that makes that string all of our deck into one place. Very important to stretch your deck out in in like your hand I mean <laughs> and then upgrade it all at once with Armaments Plus. Is that, is that like, a, is that the solid idea you had in mind? Yeah, I think that um, you have a campfire coming up and upgrading yeah. Armaments is going to be your play. What? This chat's looking at me weird. I think I, I think I was right. Anyway. So good. Um, Heavy Blade, if it was, if there were no other options, if we had King Crown and I was given Heavy Blade, would you take it? On the on the off chance that it gives you some value or just 
Too late at this Heavy point. Heavy Blade, I think, is the worst strength scaling card out of the Iron Class. Yeah, cause. I understand that. Just because it's so expensive and... Yeah. Would you take a second Anger a here? Hit. Probably not, right? No. So you nah, would just... If, if, if Iron Man was gone, we would just skip here. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay, I think mm -hmm. we're more or less in line. I do have a feeling that I'm making better decisions just because I'm pacing myself, you know? Even if you didn't help me too much. I feel like yeah. it's really nice that I'm... I've never played quite like this before, I think. At least not this early That's in the run. That's amazing. That's so good. Yeah, this makes uh, Burning Blood better. And if yep. we find a... I don't know. Like a feed or something? It also... It also makes your potion better. Oh, yeah. As long as you use it in combat. Right. Oh, great thinking. We take it then. Um... No, don't rush. Sorry. <laughs> You're gonna snap. Fuck it. I got mad. I'm eating a banana. Uh, oh. Go on, dude. Whatever floats your boat. You're talking about stretching my dick out of my hand. I had to, Simi, thank you for the prime. You know, <laughs> yeah, I found a video while I was watching educational Slay the Spire ones that was like, does deck size matter? And you know, and I'm like, oh, okay. I'm interested in this, you know? And basically it just said that if you don't have a huge deck, you're basically worthless. So yeah, yeah. it came out of that not too invigorating. Wait, was that the know? one that also has, um, that it sells the pills? Um, there might have been some ad next to that video. Yeah. Related to that. I may or may have not clicked on that, but maybe I tell you about it in private. Right. Okay, thank you. Um, I don't know what you think, but I have very little experience going for super elites in general, because I've, mm. I've just been grinding A20, and I just didn't need to kill the heart, right? So. Sure. And I don't know too much what a inc like what the ultra elites do, or the super elites okay. do in Act 2. So I'm a little bit... Uh, going into into the dark here. Crunch. So Welcome they do the Dragos. same thing no matter what act. They just they, they just have uh, extra buffs, right? Extra HP, extra yeah. healing, extra yeah. Metalized. It just scales with the act, so it's what, more really? strength, more health, more defense. Shit. Like it's whatever they get, it's just more the later, yeah. which isn't necessarily bad because like the easiest part point to take the burning elite is act three. The only problem with that is you don't get to decide where you're gonna go. Right. Um, versus now, if the burning elite's just on a good path, you feel strong. Like, you can just take it, and then next act, you have a more decision-making. It sucks going in Act 3 and not. You are getting a Relic next floor. That's a good yeah, thing that's to, good. to think yeah. about. Yeah, yeah, Which means you don't have, like, it's another reason why I think upgrading here is fine. Okay. Because you know you're not fighting something next turn. You okay. know your your next floor is safe. And you're going in with the exact amount of HP you have. You know that you have a huge heal. Uh-huh. Oh? What? What are you doing? What? 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 I'm, I'm clicking on things just to help me think. Okay. Go on. Sir? I was gonna... Uh, no, I... Was... Uh, 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 oh! Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, oh, wait, the good one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I was telling my I chat, I was telling my Toronto. chat yeah. why we shouldn't do that. Right, guys? Thank mm -hmm. you so much for the subbies and all, guys. Thank you, appreciate it. And check out Crunch, big fan of the stream. All right. Ooh, that's nice. It's not bad. That's good. not bad. You are getting to the point now where every single time that you see a chest, you just need to consider, like... Am I going to find something better next act? And like, Lantern's really good. So yeah. I think it's perfectly fine. Especially if you draw yeah. like a battle trance or an offering or something. Well, oof, you have okay. so much draw. Okay. Well, strength is not the worst at all. That is very easily dealable. How much does this um, heal me now? This no, would be 30%. Like so. Yeah, I don't need it now, but I... So this would be yeah. 30%, which would be like 20-something. Okay. Oh, something yeah. like that. Okay. Um, I think your goal right now is to play Pommel Strike into Battle Trance to get, just like to look for the most amount of cards. Oh. Um, is there is there a yeah, particular so I, reason why I should do Pommel Strike first? Shouldn't I do Battle Trance in case I get the AoE weakened or, or vulnerable? Uh, Cause then you won't be able to draw with Pommel Strike after you play Battle Trance. Oh yeah, you're right. Yeah. This is a you're just trying to get the most amount of cards oh. in your hand so that you can armament the most amount of cards. Right. Uh, like is is attacking the fellow in the back a solid chance before you can entangle me? Cause I have only attacks in my- yeah. Deck, pretty much before the entangle and more importantly before the vulnerable oh is that something he does as well i forgot yes could you could you that's is it a bad time now to walk me through some of the do's and don'ts of this fight i have a i have a notion of what to do but i feel like it's really helpful when you've walked me through mm -hmm. it before yeah no i think it's always like almost like 95 percent of the time you're always gonna go for the red slaver first just because the yeah like you said the entangled but more importantly the vulnerable especially with the plus strength they're just gonna one shot you um so yeah, getting that guy down within one or two turns is imperative, okay. but I think it's going to be really fucking easy. Um, then the at this uh, ascension, the middle slaver is going to be putting a bunch of shit into your deck while also scaling his own strength, which obviously is very scary. Um, 
That's incredible. That's amazing. Um, while also uh, scaling his own strength by a lot, so he scales very quickly. Um, and then the slave in the front can weaken your attack, or he cannot, and he didn't this turn, so no reason to deal with him. But okay. you drew amazingly. You drew phenomenally. Thank you. Thank uh, you. I, I practiced that. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely think that you're playing Offering here, even though it draws you nothing, um, just because you want the extra energy to be able to play things before you fiend fire and kill the bad guy. Because oh. you only need to fiend fire for four right now, unupgraded, and then even less upgraded. So you can defend yourself as well. Wait, 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 wait. Um, what? Uh, <laughs> walk me through this one more time, sorry. You're not drawing anything off of the offering. I understand I, that, yes, because I used another card the, that gives me, yeah. you know. But the extra energy, you're going to take six damage, and then you're going to be able to armaments and play some defensive cards, yep. or maybe even the AoE. Yep. And that's going to give you so much more value than this six HP is worth. And then um, I don't and use then you can fire, or no, maybe no, no. I use it when there's a couple cards left. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When there's, you can just use more cards since you have the extra energy, because you can see right now, Fiend Fire is dealing ten, so you just need four cards in your hand to be able to kill that guy. And then once you upgrade it, it's gonna be even less cards that you're gonna need. It's probably gonna be three cards because it's gonna be thirteen. Right. Um, so thirteen times three is not thirty-nine. Um, okay. Yeah. So I think yeah. yeah, I think you're offering then armaments and then just playing like either two defends or a defend and a cleave, yeah. uh, whichever you want. Honestly, when you said that out loud, it didn't make a lot of sense. But now that I consider the op the alternatives, it does. So, mm -hmm. I guess that's okay. So, if, like, we look at our HP right now, right? Yeah. Um, you're going. So you don't want to play that out. No, no, no. But I like it's kind of it's super convenient that I only need three cards for this. Right. It's amazing. Yeah. It's really, really good. So that means that um, I can. Which allows use you to two play cards. two defense if you want. You can't. Yeah. You can use two cards, and you can use two defense if you want. I don't um, need two defense, however. Because you don't, I'm taking like if I only use one, I'm taking like a bit of chip damage that doesn't kill me and mm -hmm. makes blood for blood better, which maybe even makes the next uh, turn nice deadlier. Yeah, so. and you're also not getting weakened, so you know next turn you can go aggressive. So yeah, I think one defend cleave fiend fire. Wait, hold up. One defend cleave fiend fire. Yeah, sorry. Um. Now Eating that the option to kill this other guy has appeared, is there any reason why I would ever want to do this? Yeah, that's what I was going to say, actually. You still have, if you look at your draw pile, um, it, you, you you still have your shrug it off to draw, but like we look at like the, the average hand that you're going to draw, right? Yeah. You have plus three strengths, and you're going to draw like yeah. your AoE vulnerable um, on yeah. top of like another attack card, yeah. maybe. Yeah. Yeah. The chances that you're going to be able to kill that guy in the back is high, and even if you, even if he does like a weak vulnerable attack, because a vulnerable attack is like less damage, like you have another turn to be able to kill him. Um, but at the same time, the guy in the front's not weakening you, so you're not getting debuffed by anybody, and it's technically taking less damage by killing the guy in the back since the guy in the back's dealing 17 versus 16. Yeah, that's what I was saying. So conclusion, yeah. it doesn't matter too much, but we should not kill really. the blue guy. Go for it. You're dealing more damage, so yeah. If, yeah, if that's, that, that's it, the rationale. So mm -hmm. we're taking a bit Absolutely. of chip damage. This is going to be cheap. Thanks to the three damage from this, this goes from 20 to 20 for 25, and we can just kill this guy. Uh, yeah. but and then you're going to want up. to... Hold up. Um, I mean, we do have a bit of a problem. What's the problem? I mean, this guy's hitting me for 11 if I don't block. And yeah. I have 10. So I think... I think you're guaranteed to play Blood for Blood. I think that's, like, always happening. Like, you're killing a guy, and yeah. that's great. Um, and then if you war cry, you're going to be looking for either feel no pain or for shrug it off. And that's going to solve it. So put the th you're going to put the thunderclap back on top because the disarm and the ascender's bane are both going to be blocked for you. Yeah, that's what I was... Okay. So make sure to use the feel no pain first and then... Oh, good. All right. I almost make okay. the same mistake then... again. Um, <laughs> so this goes on this because it's the surviving one, right? Mm-hmm. Oil? Can I take three? Dude, we, oh, are play, we are playing with such thin margins, man. I don't <laughs> like this at all. Alright, I, I do think this is fairly simple, though. Um, Well, let's do this first. Oh, why not? I think you had lethal, but... Now you just gotta... Oh. I, would, I would fully defend since you had lethal, but... Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Are you gonna draw lethal next turn? Let's, let's look at it. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I could draw five wounds next turn. Um... Um, so yeah, I think you need to play damage. Wait, or no, you need to play wait. defensive. Yeah. Do I? No, wait, think about it. If I 
draw... If I if I use Pummel Strike, either now or next turn, I'm 100% going to draw the Bluff or Bluff and it's over. So I should That's just true. do this, okay. right? Wait, no, yeah. I can't yeah, because yeah. I... No, because I cannot you're draw You're not going to draw it. Yeah, you're not going to draw this turn. Shit. But you could draw it next turn. Yeah. Um, but I do think it's correct to attack. I think, I think it's correct to attack. Because, yeah, you're, like you said, you're, the Blood for Blood's not going to kill unless it's low enough. Yeah. Um... Small mistake. It's okay. Should we? You're not dying here. At the very, at the very least, if he, if you're gonna die next turn, you have to use. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you. Is there a it point draws. to? Uh, I mean, this will be stronger in battle. Is there any chance? Should we use this now? Um, combat lasts until you go to the next floor. So even oh. if you use it, because you. Oh, get I can use it while I'm picking my rewards. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Lovely. Thank you. I didn't know that. Oh, we heal more thanks to that. That's kind of lovely. God, you just keep getting all of the relics that just give you more relics, but don't yeah, give you relics. Yeah, dude, uh, they, they, just, they, they, just, they just think I'm, I'm, I'm just, we're just investment. Like, this is later, this is later, yeah. this is later. It's not going to be a later, I'm going to be dead. Even the smiling mask is later. Yeah. All right, well, we get that, which is lovely. Yeah, my HP is fine. Uh, I think this is smelling like a skip. Twin Strike is the kind of card that if you had strength early on, it would have been more attractive, but I think we're past that point. Yeah, agreed. Okay. All right. You're in a pretty good spot, though. I mean, you're going to have a decent amount of gold for the thing. Oh, um, another Elite. Let's go. Oh, I think you're fine. Oh, am I fine? Um, yeah, with Feel No Pain and Disarm and, and Warcry here, you have a lot of block, and then you also have the extra energy from your Lantern to be able to... to... Oh, dude. God bless the Anchor, dude. Oh, I would be so taking yeah. so much shit right now. Yeah. Is there a reason why so, I should not use these cards right away? Um, no, I think you can. I think you absolutely can. Do I go? Yeah, do I, if you do I bash if you the can, rat? You can. No, I think if you can, you focus on the shelled parasite. Um, just be just like if you feel comfortable. But like the the rat is so vulnerable, just like yeah. with its low HP, that I think like at any time if you're like, oh I shit, I got a bad attack later. pattern. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Any no, I think we're okay. To, uh, I could, yeah, you I could this use this just for the war cry, right? Uh, for the, mm -hmm. sorry, for the um, feel no pain. The feel no pain is uh, an attack that every time I exhaust something else and the card is gone forever, it turns into a bit of block just for anyone watching. Oof, okay. This doesn't feel too good. Um, You're fine. We're all right. The boot! The boot did damage. Insane. Um, I think there's, I think there's merit in blocking or in striking the, the parasite again. It's whatever you feel. I mean, more it does lose you. one. It loses 13 HP here. It's the last turn of vulnerable. Yeah. Again, you have that. You have HP in your pocket, so like you're fine. Well, like, you are fine to use offering here. Shit. Yeah. Like, you need to. Like, you, you got to get that in your head that like offering here is okay. Wonder. You're in the fine spot. Oh. And then you're killing them all. I, I, I don't Both think, of these guys dude, are dead. I think there's a lot of options to do this, right? Yeah. Like, it's almost harder than not to finish this right now. <laughs> and anger at the rat. Sir. Mm -hmm. Well, you said that there's no big deal. Okay. Um, yeah, I if don't you want to use that now, go for it. Yeah, I think that would make sense, right? We're still, because our HP has increased, we're still under the magical 50%. And we make space for this new potion that we got. And what do we have? Oh. I mean, Clash. Let's not even talk about this. Intimidate. Nah. I mean, to be fair, it's an exhaust card. So it gives it me three block. It applies weak on turn two. You could, you know, apply weak to a 7, 7, 21 or something. So... I mean, it's not terrible. It's not it's, terrible. It's not awful here, especially because um, it'll be easy to upgrade and play with armaments, right? Like it's a zero cost card, so like mm. if it just happens to be in your hand with armaments, like it's just way better. But I think it's like Intimidate's a very hard card to pick up, okay. and you're right. Now yeah. is one of those unique times where it is able to be picked up. Every card okay. in the game has its own uses, except Clash, but <laughs> it's like <laughs> just when is that use? You know, I'm just gonna find it. You know, it's like when you have a friend that's like, ah, oh, everyone's beautiful on the inside in their own unique way, except you, Frost, you know? Yeah. <laughs> like, except, yeah. Yeah. except this evil motherfucker. Yeah. I think spot weakness is also okay. It makes your fiend fire better. It makes everything better. It just makes everything a little easier. Yeah. Um, it does but it's also like, 
Yeah. It's, yeah. It, it's one of those cards that like it's so it's situational, right? Like sometimes you're gonna be draw it, and it's not gonna be playable. Plus, um, it doesn't it'll be help. Really playable it doesn't help fight. too much with blood, you know, for uh, blood for blood and uh, yeah. Um, yeah. I think I think Intimidate's actually pretty fucking solid here. Okay. I think you are not far off the okay. Intimidate solid. I do think it warrants more of a feel no pain upgrade at this campfire though. Oh god. Oh, 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 oh. This is very interesting. This thing right here, if you think about it, okay. right? It calls to me it. in some way because it it gives us a downside, which we can turn into an upside. Say that we have... Yeah. Uh, say that we, we're very lucky and we used our power uh, feel no pain. Then I block for 15. Then I create two wounds in my hand. Right? Or 20 when upgraded. Then I use Fiend Fire. Then those wounds do damage. They also exhaust and they give me extra block. So if I line up a good turn, it's like, holy damn, dude. I have a lot of block. This looks good. Uh, oh, we also have... Damn. We have Sword Boomerang, which is nice with strength. Uh, and it's mm. discounted, but... I mean, is it doing that much? Uh, ghostly armor, I don't know, I find... It's a cute card. Not uh, early. Yeah, it's it not Synergizes good. later, but yeah, it's not something I would spend money on. That's okay. 78 gold. Uh, compost, uh... I mean, it would technically make my bluff for blood better, but... Do you, do, do you see something crazy with this card that I'm missing? Uh, it doesn't seem that attractive to me right now. Not right now. Okay. Uh, start elite combat with two strength. I mean, that would help. And we can afford it barely, but we do miss out on some other options, including... It's not giving you immediate power either. Yeah, no. Uh, yeah. Well, it seems to me like I can afford power through on card removal. Is that an incredibly damn uh, stupid idea? Blind would have been an idea, but we basically just got blind but different. Slide so, again. Yeah, and um, potions, I mean... Not gonna lie, we could... This one's really valuable. We could replace the bronze, which we maybe don't need right now. Especially because oh. it's buffed with your magic flower. Oh, I didn't even think of that. Damn. Mm -hmm. Shit, 45%. shit, dude. Okay, if we're thinking about... Okay, I need to do four runs. I need to be consistent. I believe that having a fairy in a bottle is amazing. Or is that a stupid idea? No, it's, no it's health is a resource, man. Health is a resource. Okay. And having an extra 45% HP... Yeah. You know, is really good. You know what's one thing that hurt, that's hurting my health right now? The fact that I haven't peed in like four hours in real mm. life. So I need to use the bathroom real quick if that's okay. Okay. Um, yeah, that's fine. I would be able to afford the fairy and the removal. Uh, th yeah. Does the idea that I brought forward with power through hold merit or do you think that's the dumbest thing Absolutely you've ever Absolutely it does. No, it's really good. Okay. That's really um, good. We could not do power through on fairy, so it's either power and removal or removal and fairy. And if we do fairy, we need to throw away a. I think liquid bronze is like, it gets really good at the start of Act Two, yeah, and then, and then uh, really good in Act Four, but like Act Three, it's kind of yeah. Okay. It's meh. Okay. And it would also this would also protect me from some disaster events such as I don't know, some bad luck uh, Act Three yeah. elite or something, right? So. That's the whole game, is just managing bad luck. Uh, what do we get rid- what do we get rid of? Um, would be a defend maybe to even the field. Then again, would I want to keep a defend just in the off chance that I get corruption, because then corruption would be amazing. I think you're getting a little bit too heavy on the defense, I would get rid of one. Alright, fair enough. Back when I come back from peeing, I will take only three seconds, I'll be the fastest, you know, racehorse peer ever. Don't I would one. race you on peeing, I am notably very fast, you wanna race? Let's do it, three to one. Okay. Go! Let's go. Did I win? Yeah, <laughs> nah. Yeah, I just I just took a lot of speedrunning tricks. I even I I, I did yeah. wash my hands though, so maybe oh. that's I, well, th maybe that's a lack of commitment there, lack of faith. Yeah, the key is to wash your hands in the pee. To what? <laughs> okay, never mind. We're removing other. If fun. you're really hydrated, it's basically just water. Think about it. Um. Okay. Sure. <laughs> I will. I will put that in the highlights of our training session. Thank you. Uh, so question, do I want to heal considering that I'm probably going to take a bunch of damage on turn one or two here? No, because you can die. That's fine. Pfft, okay, sure. You die, you're going to more HP than you're going to be at now. <laughs> That's insane, but you're not wrong. 
Um, all and right. so with the armaments, right? Yeah. Armaments is going to be really good on cards that you're going to play multiple times. Okay. Right? It's going to be good on cards that are going to come back because you're going to have more chances to upgrade it. I but it's not going to be as good on cards that you might draw beforehand and really want to play, like a Feel No Pain or a Disarm. Okay. So those, I think, are like your next major upgrades. And I think Feel No Pain is like the greatest in the game. It's uh, Feel, no, Feel No Pain is just uh, astoundingly good. Okay. Well, I would have probably used different logic, so I'm going to write down what you just said. Uh, okay. What was it again? You said armament more valuable when upgrading cards mm -hmm. that are recyclable or recycled or reused. Yeah. There's also like when considering what to upgrade, there's also the the thought of like the exact opposite where like sometimes it's up it's better to upgrade a card that you're going to use multiple times in a fight versus upgrading the card that has like a really really good upgrade like offering yeah, but, but then like, exhaust. Yeah. You use it once. Yeah. So, yeah. All right, let's see how this goes. Um Yeah. This doesn't strike me as very good. So make it better. How do I make it better? Oh. Um uh, seem like a pretty lucky drawer. Um Oh. All right. Is this Thunderclap a terrible idea here? What are you going to do after it? Uh, I was thinking either Fiendfire, but I mean, it exhausts. I want this card to hit yeah. for a billion. If it didn't yeah, exhaust. Yeah, Fiendfire is your finisher. It's your win condition. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So yeah, uh, I just think it's better just to upgrade it and leave Thunderclap. Or Thunderclap, please, of course. Yeah, so I do that. I do this and I do this. And it's a bit lackluster, but I mean, we also lost uh, Anchor, but whatever. The more lackluster thing is the fact that you shuffled both of your AOE cards in your draw to your discard pile the the turn before yeah, they Yeah, I know. Guys. I understand That's that. really unfortunate. That was just very unlucky. Yeah. Well, I think we're Super doing this. Unlucky. There's no reason not to. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Now we're seeing draw. some... Well, you're using this first, not negotiably, right? Non-negotiable. Okay. We could use Warcry just for the three block, mm -hmm. or is that something we should maybe... Four block, it's great. Oh, four block. I mean, we're not getting a card out, and we're gonna have to put a card away, so. Yeah, you can, like, put the strike, probably. Okay. Because you have, you're guaranteed to get your offering off next turn, because you have a pommel strike left in your draw pile, so okay. even if you don't draw the offering exactly, you'll draw the pommel to draw. Um, oh, do you know how the summoning on this fight works? Uh, all I know is that you don't always want to kill them both, because he keeps resummoning them as long as one of them is dead, am I right? So, yeah, whenever they will do a summon, they will always summon back to exactly two. So if you kill two, she's going to summon two. If you kill one, yeah. she's going to summon one. So yes. killing one is usually the goal. Why? Why not? Yeah. Why not just ignore them both? And I, I think I know the answer, but please help me understand that. She's going to scale their strength, and they're going to do way too much damage. Wait, she? Yeah. She? Collector's a she. Oh, god damn it, dude. Well, all right. That makes sense. There's a lot of powerful women in this game. Yeah. It doesn't help. Damn. Uh, well, this defend goes automatically, I guess. Disarm? I, I mean, just use it yeah. on the big guy, right? There's no reason not to. Uh, should we just start pounding one of the small loots? With yeah. With anger? Is there a reason why I would, ne would, would want to not use anger ever? Yeah, if you don't want to bloat your draw pile, I don't care. Okay. This is nice. Okay. So in this like type of turn where you're about to offering to reshuffle your deck, yeah, it doesn't really matter right now. But in the future, you just want to like make sure that if like, are there any cards in your hand that you want to play again next? Like if you were to redraw it. Um. So like if you had like a zero cost blood for blood, right? Oh. You would want to play the zero cost blood for blood and then, then offering offer back it for a it. chance for a chance yeah. for it coming back. Because otherwise, you're going to be putting it on the top of your discard pile after you reshuffle the deck. Yeah. Okay. But right now, it doesn't really matter. All right. Well. Oh, shit. Yeah, because honestly, you don't want these cards, and you can't, like, Pommel Strike's going to reshuffle it, so it doesn't matter. Um, so it doesn't matter which one you do. They're, you don't really want Bash or a random Defender or Strike. Um, Again. Yeah, so. Um, is there a high priority to kill one of the guys? Should I Bash Pommel Strike Offering 
and maybe use uh, offering first like we said to not put him in your oh right your this yeah uh, i just yeah. realized um pump, we don't need to use pummel strike first because uh, offering we can still draw after mm -hmm. so we start with this true well 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 it's a lot of free stuff draw. yeah it's a lot of really good stuff mm. i mean God, if i use intimidate a, i already i already right? block yep you block the entire so turn. maybe start with this Let's see, I have 8, and they hit for 10, so that's looking good. Um... Yeah, and you're also going to be doing Cleave and have Thunderclap next turn, so I think that there's... I think there's really good merit on... Um, Letting them hit me for bashing 2. And, bashing the face, bashing the Collector, and then, uh, like, actually focusing the Collector and just cleaving, and, like, maybe throwing, like, an Anger or two on one of the guys, because, like, if you do two Angers on the guy, like, the, the Thunderclap will kill next turn. Um, you're guaranteed to draw it. And then if also you leave both of them alive this turn, you're going to take two damage, which is going to make your blood for blood cost zero. Yeah, yeah, understood. Mm. Do I want to use Pommel Strike here? Is that going to bite me in the butt if I no. draw Fiend Fire and I can't use it anymore? Um, no, that's actually I mean, a pretty I, good I, idea, actually. No, but I have energy. I mean... It's true. You do have energy. Yeah, you could honestly Fiend Fire this turn if you draw Battle Trance. I don't... Wait, you wait That's... this is out of the upgraded. Otherwise, I would remember what you told me earlier, that this would be zero cost if it wasn't upgraded. Okay. Yeah. But now it's going to get put into your discard pile to reshuffle, which is mwah, chef's kiss. Oh. Very, very good. Wonderful. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we could kill this guy but with next turn with that. You could. You, you could. I mean, that's not a terrible play of, like, getting one of them, killing one of them and getting one of them really low. But I also yeah. think, like, if you do, like, just some rough math right now with how much damage you have, Fiendfire is upgraded, so it's dealing 10 plus 3 plus a billion. So it's like, it's doing so much damage right now Yeah. that I think if you draw blood for blood next turn, it costs zero plus the Fiendfire. Like, you're in really good shape to potentially just kill next turn because you're not getting debuffed. Okay. And I'm pretty sure next turn is the debuff turn or the turn after that. Yeah, that so. debuff is nasty. Yes. Um, okay, we are here. Well, about 23 block though. Oh, there's a big debuff. Right, so Thunderclap comes a bit short of killing everybody. Yeah, I think you can just battle trance here and see what you get. Uh-huh. Wonderful. That might be, is that a kill? Uh, On the big guy? I don't think yeah. so. No, I don't think um, so. 23 block though. What is 19? What is 19 times five? It's 100. Yeah, you're close, but um, I do think that there is... Um, yeah. So I definitely think that you're blood for blooding and fiend firing, big dude. I think that's always happening. Yeah. Okay. Um, Ali, you're welcome. And then I like, I think you probably kill one guy, but like, do you want to die? Do I want to? Um, Is it a tactical death angle? Um. Uh, you know, um, what do we have coming next? A lot of anger. It's a lot of damage. Couldn't I just thunderclap anger, kill one of them? Do just blood for blood. Skip the fiend fire for now, and then defend the twelve. And we're no. I think you want to get the fiend fire off while you're not weakened, because you're gonna be weakened yeah, for like five turns. So you're true. gonna be weakened forever. So yeah. I think like by just focusing the face right now, like you're getting them down. Like what is this? Forty or thirty-seven plus, uh, like almost a hundred, like just short of a hundred. Um, um, and you have the 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 fiend the field of pain is blocking. So like you're blocking for enough here. Oh. Um, how much is that? Like, five times four, five 20. Times four. These guys are hitting me for 24. So I'll survive with like mm -hmm. a smidge of health. That kind of yeah. works and out. And then if you want to next turn, you kill both of them and then just die to the big attack. And it's basically like zero damage. If that comes down to that, if you can't deal 60 damage. Uh, I don't know Since why, but uh, uh, because the card itself exhausted, we actually yes. got a bit more block than I anticipated, my bad. Oh, no, it's for my good, bro. Really. Oh, but You're so good. Uh, we'll see about that. Uh, do you have lethal here? Let's just do some math. I mean, I can use um, the energy potion. Yeah, but the, you have the, a the, lot of damage right yeah, now. Yeah, the shit part is that I am weakened. So, um, why is this not doing? Basically, the weakening and the strength gain is canceling each other out almost perfectly. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. say I hit him for eight. Now he's at fifty-one. Uh, then this does 9 or 9, 18. So about 30. 
Let me do this, let me do that. Is it crazy that I want to try it? Sorry, I'm doing the math in my own head. 40, 40 plus. I think you have. We got it? Yeah. I just need to drink up. So yeah, yeah. bitches, let's so go. You're realizing what your deck is doing. Your deck is just racing people with, with damage. Mm. Ooh, that's... That's this is, this is very interesting. <laughs>